There's two things consistent in life. What are they? What are they, guys? That you can always guarantee. Come on. Everyone pile in. What was the question? There are two things that are guaranteed in life. What are they? Parents and going to jail. <laughs> no. No, it's not going to jail, and it's certainly not parents. I, I know some people who can uh, very, very accurately say that, um, you know, parents are, are not guaranteed in life. Life and death? No. No, they are not. You're all wrong. The answer is, in fact, death and taxes. Hello there, mortals. I am Jensen. Welcome back. We are going to be firing back into day 15. I know that this is halfway through the game. I'm surprised none of you have heard that quote before. There's two things consistent in life, death and taxes. Very, very close. Okay, so we are a cat girl, right? And we decide whether or not people get to live or die. That is the whole point of this game right here. And I'm pretty sure there's not really much else to do. The pub is closed, which is nice. We could check uh, Mortimer's booty hole. Ye sure can't get enough for the Emporium. Okay. He's got some glasses. Don't care. He's got this cactus. Don't care. And he's also got an eraser, which would have come in handy, but no. Hell no, I hate taxes. Yeah, well, some people also hate death as well. So there's not really any winning, is there? You have no idea how much I needed the stream. Don't worry, DJ. There's going to be a long stream today. We're going to be we're going to be doing a lot of things. I'm going to be lore hunting in this game today. A little bit. What the hell? Where'd this come from? We got a snow globe. And it's obnoxiously loud. Okay, let's throw that on the floor because we don't need it. Let's open this up. We'll check the news from yesterday. Pro news. MLM recruiter demonstrates company's flagship super juice and poisons self. <laughs> Eco watch. Shark numbers increasing after death of famous restaurant owner. Coincidence? We we killed someone. We killed somebody who harvests sharks for their fins. Uh, renowned neurosurgeon survives breaking most bones and body after near fatal fall from skyscraper for dangerous shrunt. That's lucky. It was probably us as well. Food courier struck by car. They've been excused. Witness said to investigating officials. Okay. Truth explorer, the anomaly claims another victim. This time a city official found dead at the construction site. <gasps> that was us. We killed a politician. Sinning at an all-time high church official's ward. We, okay. I thought that the sinner whose job was literally to sin, I thought that he'd have a redemption arc, but it actually turns out, no, that's not the case whatsoever. He's just still sinning. Student mauled by mountain lion during a hike at nearby Mesa. Yep, that was us as well. Awesome. So we've got this calendar right here. We are halfway through our first run, and there are multiple endings for this game. We're going to be going for all of them, hopefully. The instructions for today. So we have to kill three, uh, six people. Three humans with a scientific background have to die. That's not... That's not... Uh, these ones after this first one is, are not set in stone. We don't have to do those. We do have to do this ratio. Six humans have to die. So with all of these eight uh, pieces of paper over here, we have to decide two people to live, essentially. So we're going to be doing that. All right. Uh, and also two humans aged 30 or younger have to die. That's probably going to be pretty easy. Humans are so easily corrupted. Good reaping fate. We did find out in the last episode that fate, our boss, his entire deal is that he's kind of sick of living. He's lived for an eon, and he's sick of doing this job, and he kind of wants humanity to end. So he's bringing on something called the... I think it's called the reaping, or the, the something like that. It's basically revelations, where all the, all the good people float up into the sky, and all of the crap people are left here on Earth. You know, crap people being people who don't, don't pay churches any money, uh, people who don't pray to a very specific god. Like, if you have read the Torah, you're staying on Earth. I hate to say it, but... Uh, you're a crap person in the eyes of Revelation. If you have ever spoken out against your husband, crap person. So, uh, honestly, quite frankly, probably want to stay on the planet, right? All of those people can go up to heaven. They can do what they want. And we'll just stay based. We'll stay on this planet. I just wasted two hours of my life. Oh, tell me how. Because I'm about to waste three on this game. Sigmund Darren, age 28. By making a vid... Hey, if you're making something creative, there is no such thing as wasting your time. Because even if it turns out crap, you have at least learned something from that. You can always learn something from your failures. Einstein always used to say that failure is still discovery, and I would have that tattooed on my brain. If, um... If I could stick a needle up there without getting a lobotomy, if you know what I mean. Alright, he's a microbrewer slash bartender. Sigmund lives together with their artist girlfriend. They like craft beer and biking. Sigmund's brew was voted best local craft year, beer of the year twice. Okay, he's pretty neutral, morally. Uh, Rico Papillon, uh, 34, he's an email scammer. Rico, well, I've seen all I need to see. He's dying. Bye bye, Rico. He's going in the death pit. Who's next? Jade Shawnee is a liaison officer. Jade is a communications coordinator at the Cosmopolis City Home Guard. Mainly focusing on disaster management. They live alone with two cats and a hamster due to not being particularly interested in finding a partner. 
That's kind of based. Uh, we'll put her in the potentially good category right there. I'm early. Hello there, Mr. Purple. I hope you've uh, not stuffed any children into anim animatronic suits today. All right. Rector Vinogradov, 36, is a gun runner. Rector was inspired to enter the arms trade when they saw a mobster kill a would-be assassin with an automatic weapon. <laughs> I love that. They see a murder com uh, committed and they think, hmm, that is a good tool for that job. Guns. I should, I should sell those. Those are really good at killing people. No, I apparently could not release it because my friend's mom was on a meeting, was in the middle of an important call, and she thought that the recording heard her call. Oh, that sucks. That absolutely sucks. Not yet, so I could not release it. You can always break up a video into multiple recordings as well. That's a, that's a, that's a good thing. Oh, you haven't stuffed any children into suits yet? Okay, well, my thoughts and prayers are with you, Mr. Purple. I hope you, I hope you find a small child to stuff into a suit. Uh, they've compared the constant need for weapons to the human need for food. Recently, they've started to waver in their beliefs after they witnessed firsthand the destruction their merchandise brings. This is a... This is a redemption story. I'll put them in the neutral or potentially good. I feel like this is kind of a nod to the, to the film... What was it? Lord of War, the Nicolas Cage film with Jared Leto as well. They say that there's enough guns in this planet to arm 1 in 12 people. So that just leaves one question. How do we arm the other 11? And then uh, 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 30 Seconds to Mars just plays over and over again for an hour and a half. What time do you think this takes place in? I think it's fairly modern. I would probably say between late 90s to maybe early 2010s, I would say. And it wasn't developed too far after that. I'd say this probably came out in about 2014, 15. It has actually gotten consistent updates since then as well. Uh, the last one was in last May, which is pretty impressive. Uh, we've got Garrett Gold here, who is an inventor slash scam artist. That's not good. Who is this person? A nobody. Vain and arrogant, they promised numerous grand inventions, all of which failed. Blinded by egoism, they refused to learn any lessons and continued on this path, ultimately leading to the ruin of several business and the death of a number of people. Well, that's our, our job. He is not allowed to play God. I don't care what kind of personality the this guy has. Also, it's been stated to us a bunch of times that genetic factors don't actually play into the depths of these people whatsoever. So we can't, like, take gender into account. We can't take pre-existing health conditions into account. We can't take uh, genetics into account. None of those things influence death. The only thing that influences death is us sitting at a desk here deciding whether or not someone lives or dies. So if we choose somebody who has terminal cancer in their brain, they could live a full healthy life up to 160 years old. That's up to us. We're the ones that give them that. Like, it would be a mercy to kill them, but, you know, we could give them that if we're cruel enough. Jewel Gray, 35, biochemist. Jewel was born on the countryside, but moved to the big city to go to the university. They live like... They like rock concerts and bars, although their visits have fallen due to having substance abuse issues in the past. They're trying to find a cure for chicken flu. That's kind of nice. That's kind of nice, actually. What about this one? Fiona Yao. She is a mathematician. A sharp mind and quick wit have served Fiona well. They are maths expert in a popular science show, making maths cool again and hoping no one notices their extensive tax fraud endeavours. I did not think that it was going to end that way. What do we think? Is tax fraud, like, a bad thing morally? Spray yes, hi, thank you for the blank comment. Uh, let's go ahead and stick that way over here. Tax fraud, I'm pretty lenient on. It's, it's not that bad. Henzo Amuro, I, I, personally I believe that tax should honestly be voluntary. This is a hot take, I think that tax should be voluntary. If you have enough money to kind of like rent out the, the government subsidies for things like fire departments, police departments, uh, water utilities, things like that, I, I feel like that should be voluntary. But also, a lot of people will just contribute to it anyway. You should do Mr. Tomatoes. Oh, the uh, the game, right? There was a, uh, a very, very small indie game. I saw a game theory play once called Mr. Tomatoes, I think. Kenzo Amura, he's an astronomist. I, my dyslexia, or dyslexia, as it's pronounced phonetically, uh, I thought this said arsonist. Kenzo is deeply intrigued by the universe and its mysteries, but doesn't enjoy leaving their hometown. They would never consider boarding a spaceship, but they love to look at the universe from the comfort of their own home. Having witnessed quite a few of UFOs, they are slightly worried about the universe visiting us. Well, we don't want that kind of, uh, we don't want that thinking here on this planet. So we've got some morally good people. I'm really gonna, quickly gonna go ahead and just turn the master volume down to about there. That's probably good. That's probably a lot better, right? All right, good. So this guy is not really contributing anything necessarily good to the planet. He's contributing beer, so unfortunately, uh, die. He seems like he's got a happy life, though. I wish him the best death uh, possible. 
Rita Vinogradov, the gun runner. He's having a little bit of a crisis. We'll come back to that one. And this lady here with her tax endeavors, also a bit of a morally gray one, right? This guy here, Jewel Gray, also quite morally gray because he has substance abuse, but he's also finding a cure for the chicken flu, which I don't even think exists. Jay Chorney is a liaison officer. So she does disaster management and she doesn't want a partner. I think she should live. That is probably a very good thing for this planet and despite what fate wants, we're not gonna kill everyone. Okay, so we've already decided one live and we need to decide which one of these guys is gonna die, I think. Which one do we think? Do we think Jewel Grey deserves to die for substance abuse issues in the past? Although he's finding a cure for a, a disease that doesn't really exist? Or do we think this, um, this, this gun runner here deserves a second chance? What, what do we think? Someone, someone give me a hint and I'll, I'll, I'll do what chat says. Because I feel like Jewel Grey, die or live? Which one? Live or die, you choose. You know, like Saw. I'm Jigsaw at this point. Oh, we are pretty much Jigsaw. This is probably the the easiest Jigsaw simulator that there is. It's a casual Jigsaw game. Casual Saw. Casual Saw 4. Like, um... Oh, Jigsaw was pretty casual, actually. What was the last one that came out? Saw 10. That one was pretty good, actually. That one had a good narrative. And the, uh, the, the gross kind of squick itself was not necessarily all that bad. Dies? Okay, Jewel Grey is gonna die. Goodbye, Jewel Grey, you should never have taken drugs. And welcome back to the planet, Mr. Uh, I sell guns to everybody. Oh, we also have Fiona. Okay, she has to die, unfortunately. Ah, oh, well, sorry, tax fraud. <laughs> there we go, okay, so we are done for the day. Nice, oh, we should see how many pigs we've got in our drawer. We've only got two pigs, good. Okay, let's go down and see if the bar's open. It is not. Uh, Mortimer's booty hole is open, but there's not really anything good in Mortimer's booty hole today. Uh, we'll go up here and we'll talk to our boss. Hello there, Captain Fate. Grim, my grand accomplice. It's us! Oh, thank you so much! I forgot to ask you yesterday. How did it feel going through almost a whole week on your own? Pretty good! Well, let us quickly go over the usual administrative matters. The papers. If for anyone joining this for the first time, we are currently role-playing as Ares, essentially, from Greek mythology, who was, quite frankly, um, mythology's most violent psychopath. I see you have marked the appropriate number of profiles. Yay. Yes, I have. Honestly, this corporate mandate is growing a bit tiresome. Oh well, what must be done? This reminds me, have you any questions? It has been a while since we had a personal dialogue. I'm still a bit unclear on the origin of the rules, to be honest. What do you mean? Do you pick what's supposed to happen and thus make it happen? Oh, nothing of the sort. The world, and the people therein, create the situation themselves without our interference. This guy literally told us that these people are going to die with only our direct influence in the last episode. Pick a lane, fate, you twit. Although, in saying that, the whole concept of fate, this guy is supposed to be the physical embodiment of fate, by the way. The whole concept of fate is that whatever happens was destined to happen anyway. So if you, if you're walking down a path and you find a crossroads and you initially want to go left and you start going left and then you think, hold up, this is a bad idea. I'm getting a bad feeling. I'm going to go right at these crossroads instead. Then it was fated that you did all of those actions in the first place. You cannot change fate. You, you can change destiny, you can't change fate. Uh, like, that is just how it works. Uh, it's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, and there's no way of kind of, like, changing that. Because even if you consciously try and change fate, that was technically, by definition of fate, fated to happen. So, this guy right here is uh, currently giving himself a little bit of a dichotomy in what he's telling us right here. Makes sense. It does make sense, doesn't it? Our data mongers assemble, collect, and examine wide <coughs> swathes of data and calculate the parameters for the necessary equilibrium. Okay. We do not directly cause deaths, <coughs> although our choices can modify the structure slightly. Yeah, we choose who dies. That is our entire job. How can that be? If I mark profiles, don't these decisions affect other people? Hmm, in a sense. 
but this is certainly not a one-to-one -one sequence of causal links. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but he did also tell us that genetic factors don't play any account into whether or not they die. Only we choose how they die. So this dickhead with his stupid haircut has lied to us at least for half of the game. You should consider time works a bit differently in here. Well, there you go. There's, there's the setting. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Yeah, how long is a day? Ah, uh, the complexity of time. Imagine that it is not a fixed and stable entity. Okay, why is it unstable? I am sure you did not think only 15 days have passed since your arrival. Considering the frequency and magnitude of events in your moderately sized region. Uh, then how's it, how's it work? Time is an inconsistent flux. While you rest, days, weeks, months may pass at different intervals. Okay. Profiles from diverse moments appear on the same day, interlaced, within a rhizome of time and space stretching beyond mere four dimensions. Yep. That is why causal links are difficult to establish and the equilibrium is of unfathomable complexity. No, that is actually not true whatsoever. Uh, people's choices generally lead to whatever happens to them. Luck doesn't really play a huge role in most of the world. Uh, like, it's the butterfly effect, right? Uh, a casino manager flaps his wings and uh, someone across the world uh, dumps all of their life savings into a mobile casino game. That's basically how... That's basically how it works. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Yeah, what is my backstory? Was I someone? You are a death spawn. I crafted you out of different materials. Where did my parts come from and how did you craft life? The store and places. Did you have to do the bees and the birds? Mm hmm Anything else? Do you play chess? I recall some film about death with tons of chess. No. I am instead particular to this game called Go. Aesthetically pleasing, less violent and imperialistic. Oh, I, I like violence and imperialism. Anything else? Nope, we're done. Oh, one more thing. It was nice of you to gift Lady the little gerbil. Ah, oh, don't I worry about sure it. She appreciates we it. didn't want it on our desk. It was quite annoying to, to have around. So uh, really, the pleasure is mine. Although, personally, I am growing rather tired of the incessant squeaking. <laughs> Tough luck, I'm sure you'll manage. A loud squeak interrupts from somewhere behind the table. <laughs> Hello there, Red Rocks. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> We've just pissed off fate. Until tomorrow, Grim. Oh, well, tomorrow was subjective, so I'll see you yesterday, you dickhead. <laughs> nice! 400 buckery booze right in the pocket. That feels good. I just heard something oink. All right, let's go check out Mortimer's booty hole. Mortimer's booty hole is basically empty this time, unfortunately. There's no, honestly, there's probably no reason to check, check Mortimer's bussy by the end of the day. All right, we'll go into the dressing room. Yes, you did it, Reaper. You have achieved. Your grandeur grows with every passing moment. Thank you. Soon, we'll be but mere moats beside your blazing glory. Bask in my splendor, O oh mirror! It blinds, O oh sovereign. 40,000 corpses for the bridge of advancement. Carry forth your deed of darkness, Reaper. But stop before it's too late. Already getting a bit late as we speak. The dusk nears. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, I don't really want to be a cat girl anymore. Let's be a different... Okay, we'll be this cat girl. And we'll wear a hat as well. No, I want to I wanna show off this little highlight right here. Maybe we could wear a different suit. Maybe this really, really heinous looking one that kind of reminds me of, um... Saul Goodman, I suppose. Kind of reminds me of Saul Goodman. You doing sweaty? That's excellent to hear, Red Rux. Okay, good. You sweat that angst out. We're going to end the day. Let's go ahead. We'll get into bed. Okay, we got into bed. Where can we go now? We can go back to the office. I don't know what this one is. Probably just a decoration. We're going to go check Mortimer's booty hole before we go anywhere. A pleasure to see ye again. Yes, thank you, Mortimer. Now shut up. We could get a fidget spinner probably by the end of the day. There's also this here, Plague Doctor Mask, and there's also a cactus, which I am really not interested in. All right. 
And we also can't go down to the Catacombs of Knowledge. We can't go into the office because fate is already giving this demon here an earful. Ha! Sucks to be him. Let's go ahead and just do our job. Read this! Okay, good. We'll do that. Four humans. Today, that's pretty easy. A total of two humans have to die. That's 50-50, pretty easy. Look here, Grim. How about we try out some brand new methods of strengthening the equilibrium? I have great faith in these techniques of a more structural nature. Humans on the opposite ends of the profile bundle have to die. That's... Okay, well that's unlucky. That's really unlucky. Let's check the news real quickly. Do you unlock areas as you go along? Hard to tell. Really, really hard to tell. We haven't actually figured that out yet whatsoever. What we have figured out is that as we progress, actually we can, I can show you this with this lamp right here. This lamp kind of reveals a bunch of hidden stuff about everything. So when we finish the game, I imagine we have to finish the game first to get into New Game Plus. These things are going to show us kind of the path that we're going down. And there are multiple endings for this game. There's about 12 endings for this game. Uh, we just can't see the uh, paths yet. So we, we're going to do a blind playthrough where we're basically role playing as a psychopath. Oh, your mum, is that a furry on half price? Well, no, she's very expensive. Uh, there, Spamton, you're gonna have to pay a premium for it. Truth Exploder, slithering in! A lizardman pretending to be municipal officials? Weird. Young biochemist dies in a fire at work. That's unlucky. Is Chicken Flu ever finding a vaccine? Uh, probably not now. You must see this video of a laughing man dressed as Indiana Jones stealing a raw chicken from a store. <laughs> okay. Inventor drowns in first attempt to start the construction of an underwater city. Oops, should have brought a tank. Remorseful gunrunner, too late in their change of heart. No! Oh, that's exactly what I was hoping that uh, would have a redemption. Oh, that sucks. Oh, well, he's in jail now. Massive underworld implosion. Crime rates at a historical low after an abrupt criminal civil war. Nice. This after it's a good thing that gunrunner's around, right? There'll be uh, guns all over the place. By the way, I may need that cat boy for a fur coat special. <laughs> Disaster relief responds quickly and efficiently to Southeast Cosmopolis City after powerful hurricane makes landfall. That was us. We did some good. A new modern painting exhibition. Pictures of melancholy. Don't know what that means. All right, let's take a look at these guys. This guy is apparently supposed to die. He's a junior researcher. He's 30. Caleb Sadie at Rondau. Right after graduation, Caleb went to work at the Acedia Institution where they have been researching strange experimental pathogens. The goal is to achieve a potential breakthrough in human cell regeneration. It's a pretty dangerous job as it oftentimes involves the very use of sharp instruments. Okay, Death Wants Him Dead. I'll put him in the Death Wants Him Dead pile. And this guy as well, also Death Wants Him Dead. Ocean Vice, 24, he's a disciple of sin. Ocean started off as a devotee of Anson, the initial sinner, but quickly grew belligerent and took off to demonstrate how actual proper sinning should be done. Anson's sinning just didn't seem like good enough to them. So we did save that sinner as well. We might want to save this guy, see if he has a redemption arc of some sort. So these two are supposed to survive. We have Daya Sastry, 27, she's a painter. Daya paints nudes and nudes only. For some reason, these paintings don't sell very well and they've been playing around with the idea of pivoting into a life of sin after being inspired by a prominent sinner, Anson. Daya has already made several nudes painting of the sinner. Okay. Wowie, dealt so good I'm having myself. What do you mean, like a prostitute situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think he wants to just skin everything. Teardrop, hi, Ensign. I finally got the notification. You were streaming. What did I miss? Not a lot. Everything's going up on YouTube as VODs, so don't worry. You miss nothing. Well, no, those are some weird buyers. Yeah, they are, definitely. We're probably going to have to kill a couple of them. Samuel is an editor with a tragic past. Samuel Van Selag. He's 44 as well. One, they've always kept themselves. Every day it gnaws at them, causing intense sorrow that can never be alleviated. To numb it all, they become addicted to painkillers, which often cause them to hallucinate mythological things. You know what, I'm actually gonna go with a gut feeling and I feel like we're gonna uh, probably kill these, this researcher right here and this editor. I don't really care what fate says. Fate is a twit. I'm going to kill these guys right here, the junior researcher and the editor. Sorry, buddy, you are going to die. You are going to die. Don't look at me while I sign your death warrant, please. Ah, uh, that feels good. This is fine. Drop a single world parameter value at least two levels in one day. Whoops. <laughs> oh no, that's not good. Okay, those are the deaths and these two, she paints nudes, honestly, that is pretty productive. You know how hard it is to paint something? Let alone a penis? It's so hard to paint. Look, here, I'll show you just how hard it is right here. Whoop, whoop, way. This right here is a little, oops, is a little happy, oh, it, it's just putting the paper down. I want to, uh, okay, let's do little eyes right here, here and here, and also a little smile. This is one happy penis. 
Yeah? That's a happy penis? Look how hard that was. It's not even hairy and all <laughs> Okay, live. And also the Sinner, I feel like, um, Redemption Arc. How bad could Sinners really be, honestly? Okay. Do you want to confirm your choices? Absolutely. goddamn lootly Nah, what do you mean, nah? You are the next Leonardo? You mean Leonardo, right? Leonardo da Vinci? I actually know a wee fact about Leonardo da Vinci. You know the Mona Lisa? I know why she's smiling. It's because of his assistant, Monsalai. It means little devil in Italian, I think. Uh, he had an assistant, and I'm pretty sure he put the wig on the assistant, and that's what he painted. That's that's why Mona Lisa is an anagram of Monsalai, little devil, which was the nickname of his, of his assistant. Very cool. Uh, we're going to go into the office with Fate now. We're going to end the day, see what happens. Hello there, Fate. Grim, my fellow colleague, I have been deliberating a matter. Perhaps you can be of assistance. Maybe! Should I become a writer? I could write many compelling works of fiction. No. I am an antique, after all. I have much experience. Your writing would be bland and crap, honestly. Why Why can I only be supportive? Can't be any worse than some of the writers out there. Hmm. Cannot be worse than what? You know, I played this computer game where you talk to your boss a lot. Game writing? Come now. I hardly think that counts as a real art form. Well, look who's become pretentious. Fate is actually a bigoted asshole. It's probably why he told us that genetics don't play into effect whatsoever, huh? But the real question is, does she have a balloon between her knees and what colour is it? Oh, the Mona Lisa. Uh, I don't think so. Rubber was not actually an invention back then. Certainly not latex rubber. I shall continue my contemplation. But for now, it is time for daily feedback. Okay, give me my feedback. Ah, all the files are in order. Excellent work. You are a testament to meticulousness. That's right, Fate! The cat mutters in contentment. Well, off you go now. I must return to my deliberations. Okay, bye-bye! Bye-bye, Fate! Don't write anything, by the way! You suck at writing! Okay. <laughs> Good, we got that in there, huh? Colour? Wow, is that the nerdy nerd? That's Fate. That is literally Fate. The music is fire. It is kind of fire, isn't it? Why that cat kind of... <laughs> <laughs> what, do you mean us or the... I'll, sh I'll show you. I'll show you a sexy cat. You guys want to see a cat that's kinder? Check this out. There we go. That's us, baby. Baby cakes. Do you like this? We are a sexy cat girl. We got huge thighs as well. You can't really see them through the suit. Uh, but we've got gigantic e-girl thighs. Color? Oh, what color is the balloon? I don't know. <laughs> There's probably no balloon there. Fidget spinner, let's buy it. I'm buying the fidget spinner. Well, blow me down, lad. <laughs> the arcane fibbledy scoop of some wizard whose name I ne'er got. Okay. All clicks and crackles and bibbles and bops. Found its scale in a tower. Used as a rat trap. The wee buggers couldn't get enough of it. Playing so hard they forgot about frivolous things. Like food or sleep. <laughs> Tis a remedy for restless fingers and idle hands. <laughs> He's referencing a study where um, rats were put into a sterile environment and they had this this item, this right, that, and they press a button and it dispenses cocaine. And what the study found is that the rats will constantly choose the cocaine um, over literally anything else. Sleeping, food, which uh, there was some at multiple times a day. Uh, they could sleep whenever they want. Unfortunately, the lights were also on and they were in a glass tank for study purposes. Uh, then there was another study conducted uh, which kind of debunked this entire theory where they put things inside of the cage that wasn't cocaine and the rats would specifically choose the things that were fun over the cocaine every single time. So that study where, you know, rats always choose the cocaine, that was a bunch of absolute garbage crap. Let's go to sleep. In the day. Rules card may like that pirate sailor. Oh, he may do. What's British spelling? What is British spelling? They share accents? Do they? I remember Rulesguard having a, a much more like full and rich accent that I voice acted for him rather than this actual pilot. We are going to check out what's in his booty hole. Maybe, but Mortimer does love a good scuffle. Thank you, Mortimer. There's a coin right here. It's 
600 bucks, good god. Ephemeral mortality. A coin, the thing which usually makes up the largest portion of any buried treasure. It's probably cursed. This suit would make me look sharp and professional, while the bow tie adds a subtle flavor, sl flavor of levity. Fifth of the funeral of clowns. I think we get this. I think it might actually give us a clown suit. Okay, let's go to work. If there's nothing else to do. No, there's not. Okie dokie. Let's go to work. Fidget spinner! Oh my god, look at this thing. Look at it go! I'm gonna break it. I'm actually gonna break it. Oh my god. Oh my god! Let it rip! I just got an achievement for getting the fidget spinner, the spinner to go up in flames. Nice! The balloon, I think, was a Kunk on Earth reference. Okay, we'll keep that in the corner right there and we'll never touch it because, quite frankly, it's spinning faster than the speed of light. Okay, let's read our mail. No, let's look at the news first. Uh, young researcher dead from a yet-to-be-identified pathogen. Doctors left puzzles. Okay, that sucks. Unidentified body found in a lake. Accidental drowning presumed. That's probably the end of Friday the 13th. Sinning levels keep increasing. We're heading towards a synastrophe, officials warn. What officials are looking at sinning? Local artist has gone rogue. Keeps graffitiing nude figures all over the city. We did that. Nice. Enjoy your culture, you bastards. A fresh idea. I hope you are still well motivated from our performance discussion. We're trying out another new structural method. You will be required to demonstrate utmost precision. Quote for the day. All humans in the bottom row have to die. What, seriously? Keep the chaos away, will you? Okay, so that's actually a core requirement, I think. I don't think we really have a choice, right? All three of these people have to die. Okay, Dudley Singleton, 55, unemployed. Dudley aims to make the world a better place by collecting tear. Bottles, cans, and the like. After collecting a set amount, these bottles can be exchanged for money, and new alcohol can be bought from the proceeds, which creates more bottles to take care of. That is a monopoly if I've ever, ever heard one. It's also a glorification of homelessness, so unfortunately, sorry there, Dudley. Uh, mercy time. Caesar Julianus, 48, he's unemployed. Caesar used to be a minor until their lungs got completely ruined by pneumoconiosis, also known as black lung. Surprised that it still happens in this day and age? That corporate, that's corporate cost cutting for you. Caesar now survives off of their settlement money and medical pension. Ah, well, someone's gonna have to inherit that, according to fate. And we've also got, whoops, we've also got Benetton Cyrano over here. He's 36 years old. Please don't look at me, Caesar. Comics artist and podcaster, Benetton, an artist and writer of graphic novels, is often full of size and a religion. A religion? They host, together with a pal, a religion-themed podcast without being a jerk towards the belief of others. It's a pleasant listen that brings bi-weekly amusement. In their free time, they are dedicated to crafting intricate poems in many languages. Uh, poetry is made to be enjoyed and not heard. I hope he's not actually reading that poetry out on the podcast, to be quite honest. Let them live so they can buy my whole family special. I'll do no such thing, Spamton. Did you know that you can turn caps lock off after you put in the computer password? I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Is the password caps lock? <laughs> it's fidget spinner still going like crazy as well. Can we draw on it? No, we can't. All right, so I think that's better than Cyrano. It is actually probably a good thing for somebody to be raising awareness about uh, the benefits of religion. Because religion, it, it has a bad reputation and it really doesn't deserve one, to be quite honest. Like, it's definitely necessary. And to be one of those people that just kind of sits there and think, oh, I'm too smart to be tricked into believing an invisible man lives in the sky. That's elitist and also you're... Um, cheapening something that people genuinely need in times of hardship. Unfortunately, he has to die. Ah, well, so says fate. Good. Uh, these three go into the death pile, unfortunately, because they're dying. All right, let's take a look at the rest of these. So we've got free reign on the rest of these guys. We can choose basically whatever we want. Bruno Griffiths. He's a 32-year-old mercenary. He's very pretty as well. Bruno is a mercenary, always ready to work for the highest bidder. They're currently stationed at Faraday with a government contract providing security services. They act tough and gung-ho to cover up the fact that they haven't been trained properly to act in a combat zone. That's pretty funny. Uh, there is actually, we already have somebody in Faraday kind of looting the area, but oh, oh my god, the fidget spinner. It's almost top. We actually already have somebody um, looting artifacts in Faraday, so I don't necessarily think that we are interested in having this guy like come across him and then maybe shoot him dead. Let's kill him. Okay, Kira Erin Moore. These, this one I'm going to leave to you guys. Kira is going to be left up to everybody in chat. I'm shouting on purpose. Nice. Kira Erin Moore is 40 years old. She is a chauffeur. 
Gera initially becomes a rideshare driver due to needing extra funds. Soon they found an opportunity to upgrade to a luxury vehicle chauffeur, which requested to go through extra training in evasive and defensive driving techniques. These days they feel pretty badass behind the wheel. Does she live or die? Kill! Lamau, my sister's name is Erin. Okay, um, we've got one for kill. Sorry, if your sister's name is is uh, actually going to be Erin, I'm going to give you two votes. Let her live. She might buy key gen. Okay, we've got one for live, one for one for kill. It's up to you there, Iris. Live? All right, let's let her live for once. Here you go. By the luck of chat, you're alive, Kara Erin Moore. There you go. She's she's alive. What about this one right here? Sun Yu Furaha. She's a 55-year-old shopkeeper. You guys choose this one too. Frustrated with the bland condiment selection at the local grocery stores, San Yu opened up a shop to sell specialty cooking ingredients. Now people can cook dishes originating from all around the grove. Do you want to kill the chef or do you want her to live? How do we feel she contributes to society? Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw some fancy artwork over her face until you guys decide. Oop. Kill? Are you sure? Are you sure you want to kill this lady? I mean, just looking at her profile, she's had it kind of rough, hasn't she? Uh, let's give it a couple of uh, nice little details here and here. And we'll give him a couple of nice wee arms hanging off the side here. And a little face as well. And also, he's having a bad day, so he's got a frown on. All right, what do we think? Kill, kill, kill? Good grief, everybody. She's only a chef. All right, she dies. That sucks. <laughs> Uh, I hate to see who's going to uh, look at her obituary that just threw over his face. Okay, last one. We get to decide. Come on, chat. Let's decide. Kyo Akihito is 62 years old. He or she is a farmer. Kyo has lived in four different countries, finally settling down at the Sun Country wine region, where they now work as a viticulturalist. That's someone who grows grapes. They enjoy fast food, cooking, and horse riding, and have, seen s have seven grandchildren who visit often. Jeez, everyone wants this one to live. The chat has no mercy. Live. Are we sure that we want this guy to live? I feel bad for him. If we get one more live, I'm going to spare him. I'm going to spare him if we get one more live. Come on, guys. Let's get the votes in. Let's see. Live or die. Yo Akihito. He's a farmer. He uses Barkley, so he must die. Kill, kill. Oh, no. All right, guys. It's 50-50. Who's, who's, who's going to break the tie? Who's going to break the... All right. I'm gonna break the tie. I'm gonna break the tie. Kill? Sorry, Spamton. I've already decided how we're going to do it. I have a coin right here. One side says uh, no or on because it's backwards. The other side, is, the side says say. Right? Yes is going to be live. No is going to be kill. Are we ready? I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna flip this coin. I know there's a coin in the game, but I'm literally gonna flip this one. All right. What is this? You guys get to just. Oh no! Unfortunately, fate has decided that he dies, unfortunately. So sad. Oh, it does feel bad, doesn't it? Please. Oh, no. Now I've got... Oh, it feels bad to kill somebody after somebody begs me to let him live. But such is the rules of fate. That is the point of the game. Oh, well, that's our day. Oh, wait, look at this. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize the snow globe, like, showed us whether or not the world is going to hell or not. Yippee, hey, yeah. Okay, so that guy unfortunately bit the dust. Let's check out Mortimer's booty hole in case there's anything good in here. Uh, we need to get paid first, don't we? Oh, well, such is like. I'll give you two votes on the next one there, DJ. Uh, just because you, you really missed out on that poor farmer. That poor elderly farmer. Deathspawn. Yes? I have been ruminating on the humans. They vex me. I don't care. Why do they exist? Their presence still seems unnecessary. Would it all not be simpler without them? Maybe, but it's not your call to make! Perhaps we do still hold some control over the levers. That is the opposite of what he just told us yesterday. This dickhead is literally flip-flopping on everything he chooses. Um... We've already decided! Why even think about anything? Indeed. Why question? I would do well to learn from your unambiguous steadiness. Yes! No need for second thought. No need to imagine anything different. Not even Birdly is that pretentious? Yeah, I fully agree with that. Although this guy is a uh, god. This guy is actually a god. Well, Birdly only really has nipples. That's basically the, um, the extent of Birdly. Well, I appreciated the discourse. 
good night. Wait, I didn't even get my daily review. Oh, right. Slipped my mind. Well, if it is that important to you. Okay. It seems you marked more deaths than necessary. You didn't give me a number, my dude. Enjoy your reprimand. What reprimand? Now depart. <laughs> I have things to contemplate. <laughs> that was the reprimand. Excellent. That cat is in my nightmares. Yeah, he's in my nightmares as well. We gave him a squeaky toy and now he just won't stop playing with it. I'm surprised he didn't squeak it halfway through that. Can we take a deep look inside of the booty hole? Yes, we can. Oh, we got no money today. That sucks. So we can't afford anything. We'll take a deep look in the booty hole. I think we've already seen it a couple of times today, though. All right, there is a coin. Uh, there is a coin in the booty hole. There's this bow, bow tie in the booty hole. And there's also this eraser in the booty hole. Unfortunately, we only have 300 buckery boos in our pocket. And Mortimer here is going to require significantly more for us to stick into his booty hole before he gives us any, any goodies out of it. All right, we're going to go up, 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 up. Get some uh, motion sickness on our way up. Now we're going to end the day. All right, good. Let's take a look in the mirror real quick. Hey there. What you up to, Kimmel? Oh, I'm just uh, thinking about changing my look. Uh, killing. Sure you are. I'm killing it. The suffering. How many lives have you taken? Do you even count? I'm not paid to count. Starting to look a bit grim, ain't it? Yeah, I'm a reaper. I guess that's already in the name. You don't say. Grim. Reaper. Not even Taskmaster is that good? No, no, no. Uh, I'm not hurting anyone personally. That's actually not true. We've been told that we directly kill people. Uh, not my place to rattle the status quo. The great engine of life always stops. Someone's gotta stop it. It's not me that's gonna this do that. happens to be you. Directly in control. It's not what we got told. No wonder fate picked you for the crafting pot. Now, I want to know what, how he crafted us, because if he just busted a nut into a cauldron and then we popped out, that would be literally the weirdest uh, the origin story in the world. Oh, this looks nice. Let's go ahead and change our, um... Let's wear a hat. Let's wear a, a nice fancy hat. Maybe this golden top hat, perhaps? Or maybe like a paperboy hat? Or a sombrero? I kind of like the sombrero, actually. Maybe we go for the Oh, zebra striped sombrero. Is there like a zebra striped suit? Find it. We'll go for a zebra stripe suit today. That's good, huh? You have a dick nyalf? God, I, I wish I could read that on command. I can interpret German pretty well. I can't, like, read it. All right, the world is literally burning. Oh, no. Oh, poos. We did this. That's really bad. Oops. <laughs> okay, instructions. Every other profile has to die. So that's four deaths for life. Starting scrim, life ought not to be too predictable, but that massacre you wrought yesterday, unacceptable. Yet I understand we could use a bit of an alternation and alternation sometimes, alteration sometimes, which is why I've developed a proper new process. Every other profile has to die. All right, so I'm not following that. We're all gonna choose. We're all gonna choose together. This is now a democracy. Here we go. Jerry Murrell, also, DJ, you got two votes on this one. 49, he's a kidnapper. Or maybe, when you want to use your two votes, you say so. How does that sound? Don't you want to be like your good friend Spamton? Can you say to Yin set from me that bubble tea comes from Taiwan? Uh, I can tell her that, but she already knows. So she's just going to be all like, why do I care? Right, Jerry Morrill, the kidnapper. Jerry is a creepy kidnapper. There's no way around that. Their latest plan is ambling near stadiums, wearing a cute mascot outfit and swiping kids who want to take a photo. It hasn't really worked thus far because of the crowds, but when it will, they'll demand a substantial ransom. All right, live or die, guys. Does this kidnapper who uh, kidnaps children live or die? Kill. Well, that was easy. <laughs> Kill. Not using two votes. Uh, just say when you're using the two votes and then I'll take them into consideration. Come on, guys. We got two for kill. Judging by the amount of people we've got here, I'd say like three or four would suffice. What do we do? Are we, are we letting Jerry live? Do we want to let him fulfill his dream of kidnapping a child while wearing a mascot costume? Which hilariously is uh, the origin story of Purple Guy. No? Live! Spamton! My god, you are a heathen! <laughs> My bison peepees. He's not gonna buy any peepees, I can guarantee that. If he's, kid if he's killing children, I think he's on a budget. Change vote to live? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, do we let this kidnapper live? We want one more vote. Come on guys, just one more. Do we let the kidnapper live or do we let him die? Let's cross out his eyes in case we have to kill him. 
Let's go ahead and give his chin some balls as well. Yep, nice. Bro, I swear YouTube always censors my messages for no reason. I'm going to assume that you said kill then. All right, we got 50-50, right? Does that mean coin flip? We'll see if we've actually got a coin somewhere. We probably do have a coin literally just lying around somewhere. Where would we find one? Oh, we didn't check the news, did we? Okay, local go back to eating plain boiled potatoes when spice shop closes after death of the owner. That sucks. Death of viticulturalist drastically lowers the overall quality of wines from Sun County. Don't care. Mercenary squad crashes helicopter into mountainside. Three confirmed dead. Well, they didn't have any training, so that was probably bound to happen anyway. Schaefer evades attackers trying to assassinate visiting diplomat. That's nice. Noted podcaster struck by lightning after uttering blasphemy. <laughs> Coincidence? Body found crushed under an avalanche of bottles. There were so many. Oh no, he may have actually just found like a wealth of, of money. Okay, so we've got, what have we got? We've got a kill, we've got a live, and we've got two lives. Okay, he's gonna live. This kidnapper is gonna live. All right, my dude, it's your lucky day. So this one technically should die, right? Because every other person should be living and dying. Finish him since he won't buy my merch. No, no, he's good now. Jaya Morgan, he, she's 40 years old. She is a full-time mother. Jaya is a mother of four who had their first kid at a really young age. These days they live together with an extended family. Jaya loves knitting and crafting. Okay, first person to get it in chat decides whether or not they live or die. This one's gonna be a fast sweepstakes. She's probably gonna die, let's face it. All right, is she living or dying? Let's, let's see, let's see what chat decides. What is morally right? Do we kill this mother? She could buy my family special. Kill. All right. Kill it is. Sorry, mother. She. <laughs> I knew she was going to die as well. All right. Talia Al Farsi. She's 64. She is the president. Talia is the current president of Formosa, recently elected after years of working as a professor of economic theory. They are known for being critical of exploitative structures and pushing for more wealth equality. They have three kids and eight grandchildren. Live or die. Live or die. Live. Okay. Live or die. Live or die, guys. I'm going after Red Rux's live right here. You can see it in the chat corner. Which one? Live or die. We'll do the, We'll put this one up to a vote. And the next one can be like a big, a big flash one. Kill? You want to kill the president, DJ? Live? Okay, 50-50. Next one's going to decide. Who's deciding? Who's deciding on whether or not the president lives or dies? If you spell kill with an uppercase K, then it will censor it. But if you don't capitalize it, it will not censor it. Ah, that's good information. Kill. Okay, we've already seen, we've already seen yours, DJ, unless you want to use your two votes. Come on, let's see, let's see guys. Live or die, you guys decide. Next one decides. Literally the next one who hasn't voted already decides. Let's get rid of the, the grandchildren part so that we don't have to feel bad when she dies. Kill! I knew it! Okay, we're killing the president. <laughs> she is the president. Yes, I know. I know. Oh well, sucks to be her. Uh, Zygmunt Zosi, 25, unemployed from all the available activities. Zygmunt only likes watching TV, playing computer games, drinking beer and eating pizza. Without even live streaming at all. <laughs> they live with their mother and claim to have no mission in life other than wasting the world's resources. Alright, live or die guys! Kill? Alright, kill. He dies. And by... By rule, we have to let everybody else live, unfortunately. Sigma? Sigma nuts. Okay, Kelly Ephigenia, sir. Let's look at these people we're saving first. She's a 52-year-old student. Um, wait, we've already had her a couple of times. Kelly decided to return to school to finish their education after their four kids grew up and went to find their own paths. While progress is difficult after such a long pause, Kelly is de dedicated and diligent. When not in school, they write slam poetry. Great, I can't wait to hear some of that garbage. Uh, hit the, hit the radio waves. Johan Zies, 19 year old student. Johan is doing okay in school and they've even gained a couple of good friends, one of whom they have a crush on. Their parents are about to leave town, which means it's about to, it's time, about time to throw a huge party. Well, I hope you enjoy your party, my dude. <laughs> oh, that poor mother of so many children and also the president are dying so that their kid can have his party, by the way. What do you mean, Sigma Nuts? Sigma Nuts, Sigma Balls! Okay, Rashida Mateos, a 37-year-old diplomat. Rashida is a representative from Carthenia, a nation recovering from a major economic crash in Cosmopolis City for a state visit. They come to negotiate a mutually beneficial agreement as they were being driven to City Hall. Their vehicle was attacked by would-be assassins who were thwarted by their chauffeur. Good, well, let's not waste her life either. 
And Nasir Al Faraj, or Faraj, 20 year old CrossFitter. Oh, I hate CrossFit. Nasir loves to be physically active, and being a CrossFitter suits their lifestyle perfectly. Although the sport gets a bad rap for good reason, Nasir is determined to set a great example how CrossFit can be performed safely. All right, fine. This guy has to live. Unfortunately, those are the rules of fate. We we don't make the rules. Oh no! No! Oh, we let too many people live. Wait, did we not fill one of these out? Oh, Jerry! Jerry got to live. I forgot about that. Ah oh, well, fate's not gonna mind too much. Let the nerdy nerf. Sigma Hey New Seas. Okay. Okay, thank you for that offensive Spanish slur, Red Rocks. At least it's not racist. At least it's just a penis joke, that's fine. Okay, let's get paid. Let's get up here, let's get paid. Hello there, Fate. How are we today? Grim, welcome. Remember when I told you of my idea to become an author? I think I have reached a conclusion. Is this really what my job has come to? Uh, I am sorry. Am I taking up too much of your precious time with my insignificant fancies? Yes! Now listen. Uh. Truly, I have decided to set myself upon the path of grand artistry. I shall compose a novel most illustrious. One that will explain everything. Can I read it? Certainly, once it is finished. You will be the recipient of the first copy of the first printing. Wait, you don't have any other friends? Anyway, we have some official business to take care of, yes? Uh, the tedium of profiles. It's Latin? Oh, that's right, it is Latin, isn't it? Don't worry, Spanish and Latin definitely have uh, very, very similar structures. That's, that's often uh, mistaken in my own head, at least. Alas, you have marked fewer deaths than necessary. Yeah, I tried. A reprimand will be noted down. Let not your attention be diverted from the tasks at hand. Be attentive. Okay, fine. I'll be attentive this time. Now I bid thee goodbye. The inaugural words of the greatest novel of all time will be engraved tonight. That's nice. I don't care. I literally could not begin to describe how much I do not care. We didn't get paid for today. Oh, we were doing so well. And now we're not. The pub's closed. Mortimer's booty hole. We can't buy anything anyway, so let's not even bother. Uh, let's go ahead and end the day. Uh, do we go see Fate first? No, he's reaming out somebody else. Luckily. Luckily for us. Is the pub open? No, it is not. Let's check out Mortimer's booty hole. Is oh. You're looting. All beware. Yeah, we're plundering the, his, his booty right here. We do have a Kalaka mask right here. Sorry, Calavera. I think this is going to give us, like, candy skulls to wear. We've also got this coin, and we've got another cactus. I think we're, maybe we get the coin so I don't have to flip an actual coin IRL. All right, let's go into the Grim office. All right, let's see what's on for today. After, we check the news. There is no news. Oh, here we go. Local CrossFitter inspires hundreds to join gyms across the country after doing 100 by 100 kg grip thrusts for topless for charity. 100 100 kilo hip thrusts topless. That is a lot of hip thrusts. How do you weight hip thrusts? Like, I do gluteal bridges. I, I do around about... 70 kilo gluteal bridges at 8 reps now, but I don't know how you just hump 100 kilos. Unless it's like a sex thing, in which case I don't want to know. Pro news, economic negotiations proceeding according to plan, a potential deal in sight, that's nice. Disaster strikes as the leader of our southern neighbours killed by an unidentified assassin during an official visit. Oh well. Intelligence agencies uncovering connection between the Formosan ultra-rich and the presidential assassination. Awesome. Massive house party leaves disaster in its wake. Anonymous attendees report it was a heckin' good party. Great. A house fire caused by faulty electrical equipments claims the life of a youth. Oh well. A spree of kidnappings, strikes, Cosmopolis City, families left in toil, turmoil. Hey, that was us! We let the kidnapper live and he's, he's actually, he's managed to do a bunch of kidnappings. You want me to send you the link of the recipe once done? Olive Garden? I beg your pardon? AI breakthrough imminent, promises founder of Trans Global Inc. Sports Corner, will superstar racer Miguel Sell bring home another trophy for Com Cosmopolis City? Who cares? Charity auction to take place in rural Cosmopolis, bring your friends. I will bring nothing. Okay, the last three humans coming from the facts have to die. Okay, so this one's gonna be pretty easy actually. I will keep this short, far too many humans are alive after yesterday. I'm suspecting a systemic bias in our balancing methodology. So the last ones that we kind of process have to be deaths, which is absolutely fine. We can do that. 
All right, let's start looking around. Robin Coffin, 34, he's a police officer. Uh, first one will kill. First one on this one will kill. Uh, grim, serious, heavy-handed, Officer Coffin has been described in this manner in almost every evaluation. They seem to get along with other police officers, but often have conflicts with those in charge. They have a tendency to eye everyone with suspicion. Live or die! Kill? Okay, the first one. We're killing the police officer. So, oh no, the last three hit. No, we can still do this. We still just need to make a pile of deaths. So we'll keep these in the death corner. We'll make a pile up here of the ones that we want to mark as death. So we do have a quota now. Kill? I am in protest. You need to learn how to make decisions yourself, Ianson. I can make decisions yourself, E. See? Okay, Miguel Cell. Uh, this will be a three vote one. Uh, we'll get three votes and that will decide it. Is a theoretical beekeeper or race car driver. Miguel has always dreamt of being a beekeeper, but for some reason, perhaps due to a fear of sharp objects, have never pursued their true passion. This in turn has led them to becoming a very successful race car driver, an occupation they unfortunately hate. They'd rather just live quietly with their bees. All right, we've got two for kill. Two for kill, one more. No, no, we've got one for kill. I got my first up today. Oh, congratulations. That was a Life is Strange reference. I haven't played it. You know I haven't played it. We've talked about this a bunch of different times. I haven't played Life is Strange. Kill? Okay, two for kill. Two for kill, zero for live. Do we kill this this uh, guy who wants to keep bees? Third vote decides. Or doesn't. And then it'll be like a majority thing. Actually, two out of three is pretty good. I'll go for uh, kill, right? We talked about this once. Uh, it's come up in the Discord about four times. I don't know if they were all from you, but it's come up in the Discord a lot. Die, right? Kill. Okay, we're killing him. Ah, oh, damn it. I forgot to, uh, forgot to put it in the pile. Oh, well. Okay, Jake Bartolski. That's like Mark Wazowski. Mike Wazowski, 28, employed. Jake, a self-prescribed chemist, loves to create new interesting recipes in their kitchen. Jake's latest work involves mixing opioids and uppers. They also enjoy showcasing the new inventions at the local club scene. Live or die, you decide. We're gonna go with one vote for this one. I think that was just me talking about it. No, it really has popped up a bunch of different times, the Life is Strange thing. So, like, people have individually requested Life is Strange once, Life is Strange two, and there was also a spin-off that people have requested a bunch of different times. Okay, two for kill. I'm gonna go with kill. I'm gonna put him in the kill pile so that we can actually get paid today. Kathy Kowalski. Oh, it is like Mark Kowalski. 33, nurse. First one decides. Born to migrant parents, Kathy was expected to go far but never become a doctor. They toil long hours at the local hospital and love their job, while not being gentle with needles around old patients who accidentally touch their butt. When not working, Kathy lives in a tiny apartment doing laundry, sleeping, and eating takeout. I think the developer of this game is a nurse, because that is actually pretty accurate to what it's like to be living as a nurse. Why do they, or they follow TikToks and such about it? First one decides. Live or die. Does the nurse, does the nurse who uh, punishes people who uh, SA her, do they, do they live or do they die? Let's see. Let's find out. Let's see live. Okay, the first one was live. The first one was live. Uh, we can actually mark the lives down. Good. What about Gordy Freyheit? He's 38, he's unemployed. Gordy says they are a physicist. Two votes for this one. Because they used all of they used to work in a physics lab. In truth, they spent all of their time at the warehouse opening crates with a crowbar. They were fired after breaking an ampule of the rear HCL 3.0 compound the lab had been expecting for nearly two decades. Kill? Okay. One more vote. One more vote. Let's see. Are we killing or are we sparing Gordy Freya? This is this is. Gordy Freyheit. Yeah, this is supposed to be uh, Gordon Freeman, right, from the Half-Life series? Are we actually going to kill Gordon Freeman from the Half-Life series? Because if we do, we'll never get Half-Life 3. It's, it's basically like, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Like, if we kill Gordon Freeman, no Half-Life 3. Do we really want to rob the world of this? Do we really want to rob the world of Gordon Freeman? Come on, guys. Come on, guys, it's his pick. Just make Chell be the MC. Okay, I'm gonna assume that that is a kill. Red Rux, you've decided that uh, Gordon Freeman is uh, dying, and unfortunately, um, Red Rux is the reason that we never get Half-Life 3. Okay, this creepy looking guy who seems to smile with his gums, David Garver, 34. He's an IT architect or AI researcher. David is the founder of Transglobal Inc. One vote. 
a company that produces high-tech gadgets like smartwatches and digital home assistants. For the past five years, David has been the foremost proponent of algorithms and artificial intelligence research. Do we want Skynet? Live or die? First one decides. Let's see. Are we killing David Garver, the inventor of Skynet? Kill. Okay. That means we've got Mavis right here, Underguard. Next one. We're going with one vote for this one too. Mavis Underguard, 66, she's retired. Mavis is a grandparent with an estranged grandchild named Guy, with whom they seek to reconcile. After retirement, they move to a calm country home, where they spend most of their time knitting. They own a marvellous collection of porcelain. Live or die! She collects Hummels. She collects Hummels and other porcelain things, hopefully not like those creepy dolls, right? Like, uh, she could actually be the uh, lady from the Conjuring series, we just don't know. She could have Annabelle in her house, who could be sold away during the estate sale if she dies, uh, which would unleash Annabelle back. Okay, kill. Uh, kill it is? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's unleash Annabelle. Okay, die. And all of these people as well uh, have to die. Die and die. Oops. There we go. And this one here, die. Excellent. In they go. We only let one person live in this instance right here. Let's shake this here. Oop, or not. All right, let's go talk to Fate and have him ream us out about why we killed so many people. Grim, uh, why are you here? It's the end of the day. I'm here to check in. Oh, right. The daily... Ugh. Always in positions when I have important research to perform. Blaming an individual for the non-release of a highly anticipated video game such as Half-Life 3 is a, is a bit fair and unfair and misplaced. Well, that sounds like somebody who cancelled the game. Speaking right there, that, that sounds like something uh, somebody who cancelled the game would say, gotta be said. Uh, let us get on with it. All right, let's do our review. I see more profiles than required. Bad job, I guess. You didn't give me anything, you dick. You were supposed to give me, you're my boss. You give me instructions, I follow the instructions. Don't be such a twit. Yes, that should suffice, I imagine. Hey, can I ask you some more questions? Questions. Questions, Grim. <sighs> Fine. I have trouble finding inspiration anyway. Ah, uh, writer's block. Yeah, I've had that before. Perhaps your questions will assist me. Make sure they are deep and meaningful. What do you think dying is like? <laughs> no idea. Our immortality precludes us from such knowledge. Aren't you interested? Yet, I imagine it would be a pleasant release. What if death is extremely bad and unpleasant? In that case, at least one only dies once. But more likely, death is just nothingness. Gaslighting is a form of psychological manipulation in which the perpetrator seeks to make the victim doubt their own perceptions, memories, and sanity. This term comes from the 1944 film Gaslight. I don't see how that applies. You were the one that cancelled the game. I'm not gaslighting anyone. It's just, it's, it's, it's a fact. It's a fact, Red Rux. You cancelled Half-Life 3. And now the whole internet knows. So unfortunately, you're gonna have to live with the guilt of uh, of canceling such a great, a potentially great game. Could have even been the best game in the world. It could have spawned another 15 to 20 years worth of modding potentials for uh, modding communities, which honestly are going massively underlooked these days. They uh, found Mountain Blade Warband, they found Skyrim, they had Half-Life 2. And unfortunately, Red Rux, you took uh, Half-Life 3 away from the world. So these people, um, they're probably gonna be looking for someone to put in the guillotine. So I. Personally, I would keep out of sight of people from now on. I would go underground to try and like buy uh, any kind of like food or sundries, any kind of utilities as well, if I were you. And uh, yeah, definitely avoid like populated areas because maybe somebody will recognize you. Uh, you. You're gonna have a target on your back for the rest of your life, unfortunately. And that's, that's not gaslighting. That's just a consequence of the actions that you have uh, committed in the stream right here. And nothing being nothing has no inherent positive or negative effects. That's not true. Any other questions? Is there an afterlife? Not in the sense that humans consider it, no. <laughs> what if the afterlife is a dating game where you must charm strange monstrous gods? Grim. Meet your own maker. Suggest that the afterlife is an eldritch monster dating show. What <laughs> the hell is an achievement? Oh my God. I do that already because everybody in my school hates me. Oh, I'm sure not everybody in your school hates you. You just got to meet the right people, right? Um, I didn't really have any good friends that I was allowed to hang around with until I was like maybe 
15 years old, everyone before that point in my life was just like an absolute waste of my time. Um, everybody's just so insecure. Everybody's so insecure. And then I found a bunch of emo kids who are completely based and uh, they know exactly what they were. So um, I became fast friends with them. I always felt out of place with uh, like normal neurotypical people who mask. I hate masking so much. Masking is such a, it's such an artificial concept and I don't understand why it's there. Because um, it's basically like lying. Masking is just somebody socially lying to you to make you uh, like them more. And that's that's just stupid. That, that is a stupid concept. Do you like my emojis? Yeah, I do. Uh, those first two look like Spamton. Grim. That is just stupid. Do you think mortals have some sort of drive towards death? Because they seem to find themselves in life-threatening situations all the time. They do often seem willing to throw their lives away for stupid reasons. Life is unpredictable and lacks an innate meaning. I imagine it is up to them to make their lives meaningful. That's actually, yeah, that's true. That's true as hell. Even if it sometimes ends up being fatal. I've been saying kill to all of these. Why, I, why ain't I being blamed? Because Red Rux was the one that said we'd kill Gordon Freeman. At Red Rux, Red Rux put Gordon Freeman in the guillotine. That was a big mistake. That was a massive, a big, huge L. Massive L. Big, big L. Any other questions? Can language even deal with the concept of death? Unlikely. That doesn't stop art and literature from trying. One must make do with what they have. Art does seem an attempt of immortalization, as humans feel the ever-present breath of death. Death doesn't breathe. A hybrid of entertainment, meaning-making, and the preservation of a facet of identity carved into matter that might outlast the being itself. Huh. At least until all matter ceases to be. I mean, it's not everyone. I have some friends, but my mind keeps making me think that they're fake and secretly plotting against me. Man, you, you, you go go to it like a counsellor, I think, because you may find that you have uh, imposter syndrome, which can point out to ADD, ADHD, OCD, autism, like um, a lot of neurodivergent kind of disorders as well. I'm, I, I'm just attracted to people who have trauma because those people don't kind of like lie or, or bollocks around too much. And the reason I'm attracted to them is, is simply because I can be myself around them. I don't, I don't have to hide anything, which I just hate doing inherently. It's dishonest. It's completely dishonest. If my personality was based off of complete dishonesty, there would be no reason for me to be alive, quite frankly. I, I would have no personality. Fortunately, I've salvaged personality, which you're all watching on the uh, screen right here, but it's not because of the people that I've met in my lifetime. It's because I insist on being this person. I, in I insist on being this this callous jackass who uh, can throw around some good wit every now and then. But I also believe that because I'm a callous jackass, I think that maybe like one in six people will like me in the world if I'm being generous. Generally, you'll find like one in three people do actually like you. Like, that, uh, that's an anecdote statistic, but it's it's what I've found. A, a lot of people are inherently good. A lot of people inherently don't want to plot against you. And it's just paranoia seeps into your head every now and then and makes you think that it's generally not true. I have autism and I've tried therapy before. It hasn't worked out. So it's made my mind to dis distance myself from it. Now, that is actually good to know. If you know that you have a neurodivergent disorder early, then you can kind of plan around it. Autism, honestly, is not so bad if you catch it early because then you can kind of be aware of it. You can kind of um, keep conscious of your social surroundings and all that stuff. You can generally live a, a pretty damn good life, but the paranoia, it does pop up. It definitely pops up. Just ignore the paranoia. Um, whenever your brain tells you something that is a little bit negative, uh, think to yourself, brain, you are a stupid idiot. Why am I listening to you? And then follow your heart. Your heart knows exactly what's going on. All right, uh, at least until all matter ceases to be. So art is pointless. Everything is, nothing is. What is the difference? Any other questions? No, I got nothing. Rand, goodbye, Grim. The muse beckons. Yeah, okay. So he had massive writer's block, unfortunately. I was trying to like, kind of make him think, why aren't we being paid anymore? What the hell? Why are we having our money withheld from us? This doesn't make sense to me. Because we are doing essentially everything that the note says. Weird. I'm really to bring down the vibe, sorry guys. Honestly, it's better to talk about the not, even if you just kind of like moderate it a little bit. 
uh, here at my flat, I live with a bunch of neurodivergence as well. And last year, we ended up with a copy of the DSM 5.2. Um, the diagnosis service manual and we realized that we all kind of meet the criteria for a lot of different um, neurological disorders, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I qualify for major depressive disorder, severe anxiety, clinical insomnia. Uh, some of those have been diagnosed, some of those has, haven't, but like I have them and I'm medicated for them and I feel a lot better being medicated for them than not because I knew I had them. Uh, my other friends are kind of like going around and also figuring out what they have. Oh. Why is this in my hand? Uh, oh, everybody is burning now. That sucks. Ah, but at least there's like peace flags around the place. There's still some good in the world, it seems. Uh, we got to do our job today. Okay, any humans who seem suspicious have to die. What kind of quote is that? This sucks. The assignment. I sense an eldritch waft of air pass through my office earlier. Perhaps the essences of those many doomed to death by your actions, Grim. We could not determine the correct amount of humans to mark today, so I leave it up to you. Okay, we get to choose who we kill. We damn well better be paid for it this time, right? Teardrop, y'all gotta leave. Something came up. I'll be back as soon as I can. You have a great day or great night, Teardrop. Uh, whatever time it is, you get to pick. You choose. You vote. You vote how your day goes. Okay. I'm gonna pick these ones today, because I need to look for the suspicious ones, don't I? Ike Tulani, 28, is an ambulance driver. Ike is a certain speed that is the most important thing about an ambulance driver. Relentless speed, immaculate handing. At work, they braid their hair into a rat tail and have learned to wear a custom-made bright orange jumpsuit. Man, this guy's vocation. You live your best life, my dude. All right, this guy right here, Rayan Vargas, he's a 41-year-old journalist. Rayan, otherwise the solid and stalwart journalist, has an obsession. They adamantly claim they saw, when younger, a headless rider emerge from within the autumn mist, searching for their lost beret. All right, that was going to be a headless horseman reference, but they cocked it up at beret, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, set him to die. Gabriel de la Corsa, 49. He, Gabriel of the Corsa. That's like a Corsair, right? Which is a pirate? Suspicious. He's a valet. Gabriel is very dignified. They work as a valet in a mansion and are admired by all the other workers as they make no movements which be construed as redundant. Once they were a suspect of a gruesome murder, even though it would be impossible for them to be the murderer. Okay, well, let's hope that he wasn't the murderer because he's going to live. All right. Patty Berenjar. She's 76 and retired. Patty grew up on a farm outside the city. Post-graduation, they decided to pursue a music career, becoming a respected singer-songwriter. After surviving a stroke, their fingers don't work too well and they feel their minds slipping away bit by bit every day. They're hoping for a way out before it's too late. Okay, well, let's give her that mercy. That's probably the best thing, right? Let's go ahead and look at this one. Anna von Wolfenstein. Would judge. Anna has worked for it as a judge for 20 years and loves their job very much. Not so much because of the bringing of justice, but because of the political power the position brings. And Anna likes saving power and influence a little bit too much. Suspicious! She has to die. What's she gonna do? Abuse that power? Absolutely not on my watch. End of day. I think I have depression, but it's not diagnosed because I'm young and I also lied to the doctor because my parents were in the room and I didn't want to admit that I have thoughts about seppuku. That does happen. you got to be real honest with yourself. The best kind of, like, therapy that I have ever seen is actually, surprisingly, to go through the 12 steps of recovery uh, that Alcoholics Anonymous have put together. You get you get, you get real honest with yourself by that point. All right. We're at Fate's office. Oh, great, he's gone. As you enter, you notice that Fate's office is empty aside from Lady Portington snoozing on the table. Oh, no. This again? Sweet, more freedom from the yoke of the overlord. The old-fashioned phone suddenly rings with an ear-piercing metallic clatter. A familiar voice calls from the static. Ha ha, grim, jolly good. As you may have noticed, I am absent. I decided for a short vacation. Great, did you want to Did you want to uh, put in a request for me so that I could give you maybe the leave? It is a weekend, after all. And the free time will be essential for research. For the novel, yes? What's that? Uh, that's a phone. It's a rotary phone. Basically, you put your finger in these slots and then you turn it all the way over to the notch and uh, you can you can dial a phone number with uh, this thing, a rotary phone. I think it was invented by Thomas Bell, wasn't it? Hey, why can't I get a vacation? Hello, Grim. Are you there? Oh, curse this useless apparatus. It never works when I need it. He's lying. So, perhaps you are wondering about the nature of vacations in our profession. Well... Those of the highest management only. Oh, all right. I mean, it is not as if you need one. 
technically, you are just an amalgamation of ingredients. You are not even alive. True. True. Technically, we aren't alive. The 12 steps of recovery for alcoholics. If you Google it, the things will pop up. Uh, usually, they're all about the same. A lot of them have um, unusually Christian values, but they mean well. Like, they're not trying to convert you or anything like that. It's literally like, um, if you find higher purpose, then try and live through that higher purpose and you'll always be motivated to overcome things like anxiety and depression. Probably won't fix the insomnia. I've had to be medicated for that uh, myself, but it, it does work. It does work eventually. But what of the conduct overview, you may be thinking? To be honest, I cannot be bothered at the moment. I am certain you have done well enough. All right, thanks, Fate. Now... I must go submerge myself. Toodles, Grim. Do we get paid? We better get paid. Bye, cat. Let's see if we get paid. 400 bucks. Nice. Let's go and uh, plunder Mortimer's booty hole. Down we go. Oh, the, bar, the bar's open too. Do we spend all our money at the bar? No, probably not. Let's go into the booty hole. You're such a scoundrel. There should be a bounty on your head. There will be. Uh, we can buy this uh, death cape right here. It's going to be all of our money though. There's also a coin. Uh, we don't actually want any of this to be quite honest. All right, let's check out the bar. Get some more exposition from the other departments. Okay, there's an Egyptian guy right here. I think he's supposed to be the god of life because he's wearing an ank around his, around his neck, but he's also wearing uh, two sides, so he's probably another reaper. There's also a... This is also probably another reaper. Let's talk to the lady first. Yo, it's cracking good looking. Hey there, stranger. Hope you're feline fine this evening. Because we're a cat girl. We're a, we're a booby streamer cat girl, I remember. I don't think I've seen you here before. Let me guess. You're in the hmm, human department, right? Yeah, I don't know why I'm a cat girl. I mean, the dark circles, the vibe like you haven't slept for a thousand years. Are we perhaps a rapscallion? We are a little bit of a rapscallion. Um, we could probably go down there to get our ears pierced. It's really, really cheap. We, we've got about 600 bucks, but it's only a buck an ear. <laughs> but um, tss, anyway, uh, it's been rough, that obvious, huh? I'm sleeping just fine. Interesting met many reapers who do besides me of course you want to hook up maybe uh i could take my cat girl booty thighs and i could uh get into your bone zone or you see i'm also in the human department but you don't look tired at all thanks i guess so i figure you've been here a while by now how do you feel about the work we do I wish people didn't have to suffer because of me. Work is work. Sucks real bad. I actually feel like I should head back to work right now. Bye. We're not going to do that. Come on. We're actually going to uh, tough through the social encounter. We did walk into this bar. Of all of the gin joints and all of the towns and all of the world, we're in this one. Uh, I wish people didn't have to suffer because of me. Hang on. How do you know how humans are doing in their realm? I got a smartphone. Don't tell me you're actually using that Cocker app to keep track of what's happening. Yeah, why wouldn't I? I haven't opened it in years. No, you haven't really missed much. Thought so. I mean, the instructions are the same every day anyway. Kill all door-to-door -door salespeople. A public service. And what do I see in the app? The door-to-door -door salespeople died. Great. So very engaging. Yeah, but how did they die? How did the door-to-door -door salesman die? Did the door-to-door -door salesman um, walk in between two houses and their suitcase exploded, blowing their legs off of their body, and they, they died from just goring because because uh, uh, the, the dynamite that they were trying to sell door-to-door, -door, it went off right next to their hip bone and it just <laughs> all over the houses, and, and that's how they went? Have you never wanted to know how the door-to-door -door salespeople died? Did they slip on black ice here in my hometown of Dunedin, New Zealand because they weren't from here and they didn't know that black ice was a thing? We just don't know. That's followed by the stories of downright horrible things happening everywhere. No thanks. Um, what do you mean? My choices affect the world all the time. I get different instructions every day. In any case, reading the news helps make decisions. Kind of does, actually. I just do what fate tells me to. The decisions are not mine to make. A life with no choices, and you still haven't given up? Have you ever heard the inspiring story of Scullifus? If you're talking about Sisyphus, it's the guy who pushed the rock up the mountain and will never be able to do so, but he still tries anyway. I'm guessing you have, since it happened way back when we still use rubber stamps instead of markers. Rubber stamps? Uh, 
Yeah, I know the story. I do actually. Okay, you tell me this. Mansplain it to me. Okay. So Scully has spent all day, every day, stamping profiles to live or die. Oh yeah, was he also pushing a rock? They got a grandiose case of carpal tunnel from all that stamping. As a skeleton. But still, they kept on going. How'd they do that without ligaments? Every day they'd receive a heap of new profiles, which were basically the same as the ones they'd stamped the day before. Okay, I, I am made of questions. Almost as if powering through the carpal tunnel wasn't making any difference. Almost as if it wasn't worth it. Sound familiar? No, not really. Uh, uh, like, if you make a decision and stick to it, then you have done the best that you can anyway. In any case, they kept going. Kept on stamping. Because they had to. Because when you give up, the cosmos, that meaningless entropy, it wins. And I'm never gonna let that happen. Even if it means doing the exact same thing. Day in, day out. I totally get it now. I'm glad, stranger. May this story fill you with determination whenever you need it. You are filled with determination. Besides, as long as the coins keep coming, can we really complain? Coins are my favorite part of the job. Uh, I think it's time you start making your own choices. Uh, you def should definitely complain, though. I don't know why I would tell actively tell somebody to complain. I think it's time you start making your own choices. You mean, what? Ignore my instructions? Won't that get me, like, instantly fired? Yes, but your life would be way more fun. Hmm. I could start sparing some of these door-to-door -door salespeople, maybe. This lady came up to me in the street with a clipboard and said, Hello, sir, you circumcised. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> That is so cringe. Oh, that's a felony too, because I remember your age and you're a minor. Oh, what the heck? I'll do it. Okay, you make your own choices, lady. Time for some of these salespeople to live at last. They seem harmless enough. I just gave you amazing free advice. You're welcome. Thanks for the chat, stranger. Yeah, no worries, lady. I'm off to sow some chaos. See you later. Bye bye. I hope. Yeah, you will. You will. Bye bye. Bye, lady. You have a great day. All right, let's talk to this bird. Hello, bird. Look at that. It's a hatchling. Hello, bird. I guess they let all sorts work here nowadays. The assemblage must be decaying. The, the music has changed. It's now kind of like Egyptian themed. That's cool. Yet one must welcome the dregs. One must. What brings you to Florian, the Eradicator? Uh, I like your style, Florian. I don't need a sycophant. Thanks. Try to keep from gushing too much. It's so banal. Okay. Let's see if we can't uh, maybe change the music around a bit. Bring the music just down a little bit. That's probably That probably makes a little bit more sense, right? Okie dokie. I'm happy with that. Just be impressed you're in my presence. That's but better. Be it over there, somewhere far enough. I just read today about Countdown renaming this company to Woolworths. Yeah, no, they um they were getting a really, really bad reputation for uh, making a, a, a lot of really, really kind of, I guess you could call them scummy and immoral choices that uh, kind of led to the detriment and um, collapsing of New Zealand's economy. And they're still raising prices on their groceries during a recession, which is revolting. But um, instead of kind of like paying their staff more, which was the main thing that they wanted um, fixed, they instead invested um, 20 times the amount, $400 million, in then changing their name back to Woolworths, which it was before Countdown. Woolworths sounds like a Werther's original rip-off rip from Walmart. It's Australian. It's a giant Australian conglomerate, and they are revolting here in New Zealand. People actually hate them. A um, couple of years ago... Right next to our police station, we have a supermarket car park. Uh, there was actually a stabbing there. Somebody um, kind of lost their marbles and stabbed, I think it was six people. I'll bring it up for you. I'll, I'll, I'll actually look up the article because it's a it's a nasty one. Needn't count down stabbing. When was this? 2022. Yep, this guy here. This guy here went crazy and started stabbing people in the supermarket. Uh, the 
There's not really any kind of like motivation for it, but I assume that it's going to be high prices. The Yeah, so here's the countdown um, supermarket, right? Across this car park is the police station of Dunedin with a population of 125,000. It is a huge multi-lever structure. Is he Queso? Uh, no, this guy is the Stabber. I'm not sure they uh, are related or anything like that. But this guy went absolutely ballistic. And on top of this, uh, Dunedin supermarket rats. The, uh, there's a, the other countdown here in Dunedin, New Zealand, uh, has had an infestation of rats for around about three years now. They got foreclosed on for about two weeks uh, last year. And it looks like the rats are actually back now because this article was posted April 2024. It doesn't seem like what they did are working. All of the rats are coming back to this place. And you can actually see them on the shelves. Uh, I'll see if there's like a, a picture of it. Yeah, here we go. Family of rats just kind of, you know, amongst all of the meats and produce. People thought this was fake, by the way. This isn't fake. This is actually a thing. Anyway, so, you know, Woolworths have a revolting reputation here in New Zealand. Uh, they're quite aware of this and they don't really care about New Zealanders whatsoever. So they've rebranded and they're going to hope that um, that'll stop all the Google searches from all of the um, kind of illegal, uh, unhygienic uh, detriments to society that they've been committing across the last uh, couple of decades. Still, fate expects us to be polite to one's colleagues because it advances synergy and improves long-term morale. Yes, I love morale. I suppose. I must then do my best to enlighten you on whatever matters are bothering you today. You must really like the sound of your own voice. A delightful experience, if I do say so myself. One always has to talk to the smartest person in the room. Isn't that what they say? No, the smartest person in the room is usually the guy giving everyone the ick. The smartest person in the room is usually the guy in the corner petting the dog because they think they're so much smarter than everybody else and it's not worth talking to the idiots that they are surrounded by. So that is actually um, just a complete farce of a claim. Uh, this guy is giving me either sociopathic or narcissist vibes. And not minor either, not mild vibes either. I even <laughs> said little silly with. Try to keep your ears open. You might actually learn something about the profession. Okay, teach me. I am the best and brightest of the bunch. When I aim for the jugular, I do not miss. Yep, narcissist vibes. With blood and guts, I will paint my magnum opus on the canvas of cosmos. That's not what we're supposed to do. All flesh is temporary. We here provide the herd with an escape from their meat prison. It is called salvation. Or at least the closest thing they'll ever get. Are you implying that you mark people to death all the time? Of course not. Rules to follow and quotas to fill, as we all must. Even if I consider management far too lenient. This guy's kind of a dick, isn't he? I just make sure to enjoy every slash and stab. Take pride in a successful exit. You shouldn't be working here. For that is what we are born to do. Yes, we Deathbringers all have to die. Well, hadn't you considered that maybe uh, getting too involved in your work in that way is, is actually maybe uh, the worst possible thing. You should emotionally distance yourself from your work so you don't get too stressed about it. So what's stopping you from marking everyone? Probably rules, right? Unthinkable. You mean to suggest I go against fate's rules and kill more people? A lot more. All of them. Well, yes, now. I mean, it'd be amazing. Yeah. A glorious day. But, ah. Uh, such fantasy. I can bide my time until their atrophy. This one girl in my school got suspended for bringing a knife to school and threatened to stab everyone who got near her. Yep, um, I've heard stories about someone I used to hang out with uh, kind of threatening a girl with a, a big safety razor, those little plastic safety razors. Um, he said that he'd slash her up if she did this thing and then she did this thing and he attacked her with this big safety razor. Absolutely stupid. All right, uh, I'm leaving. Can't say it was a pleasure talking to you. People are psychos. Some people are really psychos. Lessons learned, off you go. 
But in saying that people are psychos, generally people are unhinged because of either their surroundings, their upbringing, or how people treat them. So, you know, is are they really kind of like psycho people or are they just a product of their surroundings? That's another good question. Usually a, pro a product of their surroundings. Okay, we talked to everybody at the bar. Hello, lady. Why, if it isn't the young Grimster. That's me. Again, to delight my eye. Yeah, you like cat girls? Are you still wearing the same attire from before? Oh, gross. It's been ages. No, I'm I'm actually not. I'm, I'm not wearing the same clothes. What? I just think my current look really suits me. Oh, Grimmy. This lack of transformation. No, it does not suit you. We have changed our clothes several times across this playthrough. This lady, I feel like she is trying to bait us into going up to the mirror. Like, she is probably actually the voice in the mirror. There might be like a pipe that goes down into our bedroom where she just speaks into and we're not actually hearing voices. I've got just the thing to help you out. Something I've been holding for a special case. A cool visage to make your day. Check it out later. Okay. <clears throat> Crisis averted. Say, how's the grind been treating you since our last chat? Yeah, pretty good actually. Really? I've been having doubts. Are you killing enough people? This whole power dynamic doesn't feel right. All these lives subjected to the whims of a callous office. Yeah, but what's okay, what's different? It's the same stuff. Like, this is the name of the game, Death and Taxes. It's the same thing. That's what the game's trying to point out. I can not be so confident. Not with these grim consequences. No, I'm fine with what I'm given. I'd call that comfortable complacency. Hey, I'll be right back. My cat's trying to hunt a mouse. God, my cat is such an asshole. Oh, I can never like cats because I, I've seen them murder so many um, little innocent creatures. I, I, I just don't like cats. One ought to heat instincts in collaboration with reason. Sounds twice as powerful to me, yeah. Does it? Ah, but what do I know? I'm just the barkeep. So what can I get you? Uh, any thoughts on Florian, the that bird? One. Can I say that you won't glean on your own? Probably not a lot. I already diagnosed him. They try to act all suave on the surface, but truth be told, they're a proper jerk. Yep. Can we get Ed Sheeran off the screen, please? This is female Ed Sheeran. At least when it comes to the job. Can't say I trust their judgment too much. They don't seem responsible. You'd think your profession needed conscientious workers, right? Yep. But don't take this the wrong way. I don't often disparage patrons of the den. We have here a shared experience. Okay. Here's to hoping they won't cause some sort of a major blunder. But honestly, it sounds like they've already caused several major blunders. What else you got in mind? Uh, I'll be going now. Au revoir, Lil Reaper. Fed Sheeran? I mean, she's selling alcohol. That's what the feds were put together to, to stop, is the sale of alcohol. Okay, I'm going to check out Mortimer's booty hole because I don't remember what was in here. Not a hell of a lot. We also unlocked some more clothing that we could probably wear. Yeah, let's check it out. Let's see what, what clothing she just gave us. Where is this clothing? She didn't give us any new clothing. Are you taking the piss? Okay, let's go with Destiny and we'll change our hat too. Oh, look, that is thematic. Okay, we'll go with this. Now let's go to bed. We'll end the day. Soothing. And back to the grindstone, I suppose. Pose? Yes. I'm going to check out Demons Mortimer's booty hole. Anything, matey. Yeah, I don't care. Uh, we've got this uh, calaveric here. I think we might want to buy this, right? At some point? Or maybe we buy this coin. I'm buying the coin. Used to belong to the ruthless Corsair Thaddeus Thatcher, this one. Tis the last existing item of a lost civilization. Mad Thad landed in their village. Gathered up each and every one. Sage and king and beggar alike. All right. And let's lazy luck through this very coin, cast judgment on all. About half the civilization died that day. The rest doomed to a slow extinction. Then my crew laid upon Thad's war gallery near the gorge of Satellinor. The battle was merciless, but the treasure was most exquisite. Anyway, tis useful if ye can't decide what to eat for dinner. All right, okay. So this coin was literally used to commit a massacre, an atrocity. Great, and now it's ours. Oh, someone else is in here for once. We got mail. We also got this coin that we can flip. Ah, cool. So it is actually a live or die coin. 
All right, what does it say? Your attention is required. I've been informed of a delicate situation. I trust that you will handle it as usual. Five humans have to die. One human must be spared. This is of utmost importance. Please do be careful to let the right person live. All right, thanks uh, for trying to sway fate, bait. New program of ex rally drivers trained for driving ambulances proves to be a huge success. Excellent. The military industrial complex is tackling progressive issues by having their first ever female CEO. A uh, great. I think we did that. Is it bad that I always watch your videos on two times speed? It is now. All right. Before Amandus took over the Daily Moon, the newspaper was in decline. With ruthless determination, they turned the paper into the tabloid powerhouse we know today. While recklessly digging through the lives of others, we've used paper to spread rumours, suppress rumours about themselves. Uh, this guy's gonna die. I don't like that, that's an abuse of power. Gwendolyn is not exactly sure when their career as a network engineer stagnated. There's definitely not what they dreamed of doing with their life, but they're barely just content enough and their large family depends on their income. Okay, well, like, it could be a mercy to take her out as well. Amanda's the adventurer? No, no. Amanda's the networking engineer. She grew up. She grew up. She um, she survived and she grew up. JB Solomon, 26. He's a sommelier. Who knows about wines? JB largely doesn't. They've been lazy at learning the minute differences between grape sorts and other aspects of vinification. Lately, JB has started to claim that the headless rider is stalking them around town. Alrighty then, he's gonna die. How dare you not know your wines? Good sir. Jesse Ford, 61. He's a vicar. Jesse is committed to writing the perfect sermon and are thus oblivious to the turmoil at home. Their spouse is fighting a substance abuse problem and their children are planning debauch parties. Luckily, Jesse just found a new maid with unusual but effective methods for keeping things under control. That could be a potential lift. JB Gaster? It has to be, it has to be Wingdings Gaster. A check Nord. He's a 30 year old lumberjack. A check co owns a logging company where they work as a lumberjack. Although they comply with environmental regulations on paper, they occasionally clear protected habitats by mistake. Destroying homes of thousands of endangered birds. That's probably going to be a kill, to be honest. Alright, Theopania Ena. She's a 40 year old CEO. Theo Theophania is the latest heir of the Ana family. The family started off providing security almost 100 years ago with their initial Monitor C consulting firm. Over the time, they acquired a number of factories and grew into the arms providing conglomerate now known as the Sundowner Security Services. Don't really like that either. Okay, all of these guys are probably kills, right? So one guy has to survive. I'm gonna go ahead and just like go off on a whim and kill that guy. Let's move him around. She's dying. Sucks to be her. Uh, this guy right here, oops, is a newspaper um, exploiter. I think I redacted some of that by mistake. And Echak Nord, he's a lumberjack who takes down rainforests. Although, rainforests, gotta be said, they do house a lot of wood, don't they? So this vicar right here, or Gwendolyn. We can live or die. What do we want to choose? Henry Ford? <laughs> Not anymore. Jesse Ford, he's a vicar. What do we want to do? Do we want to let the vicar live? Do we want to let Gwendolyn live? What do we want to do? Do we want them to die? I think one of these guys has to live. Which one do we want to live? And then I'll flip the coin. I feel like maybe Gwendolyn could live. Jesse could live. I don't know what he, what Jesse contributes to the world. If he's trying to write the perfect sermon, then he is a representative of the church, which is probably a good thing. And a network engineer could be pretty helpful as well, even if she's not really happy with her life. You know what? They can both live, I think. Let's go ahead and spare them both. Whoop! Yeah, live. Excellent. Uh, do we check the news? We did check the news. Right, let's inject the total deaths. Uh, is the bar open? Yes! Who's in the bar this time? Uh, Bird and the lady. Okay, we've already talked to these people. Not interested in them whatsoever. We've already seen Mortimer's booty hole. We don't need to see his uh, bussy again. Let's go ahead and talk to Fate. Oh no. As you enter, Lady Pornington is batting the rubber gerbil between her paws. The gerbil complains at every hit. See the violence inherent in the system! The beleaguered toy exclaims. The cat eyes you suspiciously, covering the rubber toy with her paw. No taking back. The old fashioned phone rings our gain, right as you settle in. The familiar, if grainy voice, can be heard. Grim, ah, you would not believe the fun I am having. Such a transformation from the monotony of the office. It almost makes it all seem worthwhile. I'll keep quiet. Yes, you expect your daily summary. 
but I still cannot find it in me to burden myself with this matter. Okay. So, off you go. Okay, bye-bye. You better pay me. If you don't pay me, I'm coming back with lawyers. Oh, I'm coming back with lawyers. What a dick. What an actual dick. Why don't we get paid? Oh, that sucks so bad. What is the point of doing the job if not to be paid? Oh, let's go to bed then, I guess. Oh, we've got a cloud in front of the mirror. I think this is dialogue. I dreamt the bags of sickly meat and brittle bone ceased to exist. Did you? Collapsed into a pile of bone meal and bubbling innards juice. That's a weird dream. From the mulch rose a new, better human being. Much more capable of living. Unburdened by weak spindly ligaments and fragile respiratory systems. Is that supposed to be us? I've seen it too. Obviously. It's an image that raises more questions than it solves. You imagine a golden trim to a rotten shack. Uh, these mad ramblings aren't helping me at all! We're not here to help, but to reflect. Oh, I see. I get it now. You. Okay, bye-bye! The mirror is actually talking to us. Alright, I'm happy with this. Did you see the thing with Mr. Beast? Yes, I did! I have been keeping up with it on Umpaville's channel. I probably won't be watching another YouTuber about it, to be quite honest. I haven't gone on uh, Drama Alert with uh, Keemstar and uh, seen what he's saying about it, because quite frankly, all he does is exploit people who are going through struggles for, for money and fame, and I don't really want to support him in that. But, I mean, you know, it is what it is. A lot of people do bad things, and it's good that it comes to light. Logging company owner dies of sudden heart failure, leaves the entire fortune to leading cancer fund. Oh, perfect. Can you have a heart attack due to massive guilt? We have the research. <laughs> that's based on the, uh, that's, ba that's actually based on the logging guy. Managing editor of the Daily Moon drowns after Gord stalking and harassing offspring of local crime boss. Okay, that's probably good. IT firm dealing with massive data breach lawsuit caused by a careless worker. Well, that sucks. Sundowner taking a massive hit in the stock exchange today as CEO accidentally shot during the drone misfire. Wow. The case of the missing dogs, new sightings of the Swamp Leopard. I don't know why we got that as news, that's not news. Okay, quote for the day, two humans have to die. It is as if a great calmness has enveloped the world. I do not see the need for many deaths today. I do not see the need for many deaths today. Half of them need to die. All right. What a dick. Fate is honestly just a, an absolute penis. Did you notice I didn't say beast? No, I did not. I did not notice you said breast. All right, so Elias Kalan, he is a screenwriter and novelist. Elias talks a lot and really fast. Mood. We're not eating tasty fried chicken. Mood. They have a tendency to start singing all of a sudden, mostly on wildly inopportune moments. That, this guy's me. They work as a screenwriter for TV, just published a children's book, and are a member of a podcast about bad films. I like this guy. I don't know why, but I like this guy. All right, Garnet Vajana. Ga Garnet Vaj Vajana. I don't know if I can say that. Painter slash artist. Garnet loves photography, hiking, painting, and visual journaling. They are diagnosed as bipolar, but have managed to figure out a way to deal with it. As such, they are mostly happy. Garnet often volunteers at a local art gallery. I hope it's the one that paints nudes. That's also a potential lid. What about this guy? Blaze Masterson. What a name. Helicopter pilot. Blaze works as the Prime Minister's personal helicopter pilot. They love flying so much they fly around all day, even when their employer doesn't need to go anywhere. All the money for fuel is taken from taxpayer funds. Okay, this guy's a drain on society. Uh, Samir Linden, 44, Waste Disposal. Samir loves the environment and hates littering and non-recycled garbage with fiery passion. They've helped make several waste recycling plants more efficient and constantly educate the public on correct waste management and techniques. This guy... Actually, uh, this guy is awesome. Okay, so we need to decide who lives and who dies between these two. Elias is a... I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill me. I'm gonna kill the guy who I'd like to be when I grow up. I'm going to allow the painter to live because she may end up working in that place where they make nudes. Blaze is going to die in a horrific plane crash and no one's... It's gonna be like Ocean Gate, but with a helicopter because uh, taxpayers pay for it. And this guy right here, he's gonna live so that people know how to dispose of their waste. Last thing we want is the entire planet to be backed up by um, human waste and refuse. That's balanced. Good, I'm actually quite happy with this. I'm happy with this. Excellent. Uh, there's probably nothing in the pub. It's also closed. Let's check out Mortimer's booty Yo, hole real oh, quick. Oh. 
What can old Mortimer provide you with today? I'm actually going to buy these dozens. Oh, they're only 200 bucks. We can't afford them. That's pretty funny. Uh, I was going to buy them to give us a nice smoky visage, but I don't think we really need it. Oh, Fate's back. Hello there, Fate. Do you have a book for me? Grim. No, seriously. Why can't I get a vacation? Because you do not need one, and because I say so. But what if it's fated that I get one? Now, let us not waste time and get on with it. Who is my favorite YouTuber right now? It's got to be Scott Adkins. Simply because um, he's getting back into the gym. He was a martial artist who played the uh, German dude in John Wick 4. He also played Yuri Boyka in all of the Undisputed movies. Um, phenomenal actor. He's basically an everyman. I'd like to see him as a James Bond figure at some point, but I, I don't really think that's going to be a thing. Mine is Jen, so where my hug at core? Don't know what that means. Okay, right. let's talk about it. I see the exact amount of profiles requested. At least someone seems to be up to their task. Yeah, unlike you, fate. Oh, uh, whatever. What's with the attitude? Why am I livid? Because the rest of highest management thought it necessary to remind me that taking sudden leave is detrimental to our aspiration. I did tell you I was going to bite you in the ass. Because they thought to admonish me for taking a couple of days to perform important research. Fate, you do not have to try and cap me. We both know what you were doing. You absolute oaf of a man. Because, as was reminded, the saying goes, now, how was it? Nothing in life is more certain than... That's a Carl Sagan quote. Death and taxes. Yes, yep. exactly. I know it. Either way, the nerve they have to lecture me on how to do my job. Yeah, it's kind of like you do to me every day. I... Uh, it is rather irritating, is it not? You have no idea! Ah, uh, no matter, Grim. I apologize for taking it out on you. That's big of you. Good night. That, that is big of you. I, I do appreciate that you apologize to a subordinate for being an absolute piece of trash. A hypocr uh, hypocritical, yucky piece of trash. I do appreciate it, my dude. You have yourself a great eternity. 400 bucks! Yes! Now we can buy the durries. Let's go all the way to the basement right here and we'll plunder Mortimer's booty hole for some smokes. Done! Smokes are deadly, you know. Yeah, it's not gonna affect me, though. valor than any I ever met. Not to me wildest dreams could I rob so many lives. Tis gazing down the length of an infinite tobacco stick, inching ever closer to the end. An ancient shaman gifted me this pack after I rescued their child from the rabid coyotes. <laughs> Guess they weren't pleased with me good deed. <laughs> assume this visage and forever be reminded of the mortality of all. Okay, I'll assume the, vis the visage of smoking some dozens. Let's get some stinky sticks on our face. It's probably a hat, right? It's gotta be a hat. I bet it's a hat. No. Weird. Oh, we can dress up as the bird. Z birds. That's right, we can. We can, can't we? Smoking kills. Miner's lung. Alt. Jill, bonehead. I kind of like this one. I like the alt. Let's go for a nice kind of like, a nice suit to go with this. Yeah, this looks good. How about the John Wick suit? That's awesome. What's on the outside of the building? I think that they are decorations and uh, nondescript clouds of some sort. Like, that right there is a, a light. A light, and this here is kind of like an entranceway, I would assume. We can't leave, though, unfortunately. Uh, that right there, behind my head, is a skeleton uh, scrawling a quill onto a gigantic scroll. This one right here is a skeleton holding a scythe um, with a fish's mouth, kind of like at the base of it. I don't know why this is the case. I don't know why a skeleton would ever need a scythe, because that's how you harvest grain. And um, I don't think a skeleton needs to eat. It wouldn't make sense to me whatsoever. Oh, we don't just talk to fate. Let's go to work. No, let's go to bed. All the way up here. We'll end the day. And now straight to work. Okay. Now, we do want to check the calendar. We've got six days left until the end of the game, which is actually pretty exciting. Okay, right. The situation is that everything got all jumbled up in our fax delivery system. You should listen to your gut today. Your gut. Yes, because you are a skeleton. No, we aren't. We actually just changed our, our shape. Quote for the day, go with the flow. Toodles, fate, done. All right, let's put that in the drawer. Never look at it again. 
Okay, Chloe Miller. She is a rock climber, 29 years old. Chloe is constantly training to conquer the rock worm peak by free climbing the full height of it for charity. Their practice regimen was hindered by having their leg broken in three places, an injury they obtained by jumping down. In celebration from an indoor climbing wall. Oh, hell yeah, you live your life, lady. You enjoy yourself. Uh, let's get this fidget spinner up and running so that we have something going on in the background while we read some of the news for the day. But I love this auto clicker, but it's on fire. Excellent. Breakthrough in bacteriology may lead to bacteria that consume non-biodegradable plastics. Fantastic. We actually just got those IRL, by the way. City budget experiences, unexpected surplus, politicians baffled. Experiences, unexpected surplus. Oh, right, because the guy who was flying the helicopter around crashed it and died. Is art still art, even if it makes you feel awful? Let's dive into the modern art scene. Yes, it is. Screenwriter crushed under an avalanche of old bad film tapes. That's sad. Crypt of Decay announced new concert tour to Walmart and beyond. Cool, don't care. Okay, Catalina Worthington. She is a retired live streamer. After a long and exciting life of adventure, Catalina finally decided to settle down and pursue this newfangled thing called live streaming on Jiggle.tv. They've amassed a small but dedicated following due to their charming personality and infection laugh. Well, I'm not going to rob the world of that. You live your life, lady. Based. What a based lady. Leon Holowizic. 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 46, he's a cobbler. That's somebody who repairs shoes. Leo can't even count the amount of shoes they've made. The dream of making shoes that gives an understanding of how it feels to be in other people's shoes. Because actually wearing other people's shoes doesn't really give any particular insights. Well, that is actually very valuable. Liv, can we follow her? What, the, um, the live streamer on Jiggle TV? I don't think so. I don't know if this is supposed to be OnlyFans or Twitch.tv, but she's 70, so, like, if she's just now reclaiming her sexuality after her husband passed away or something like that, maybe they were uh, very strict Catholic about their, their sexuality. Uh, more power to her. More power to her. Stephen Ashby. Is this supposed to be, like, Bill Cosby? Statistician. Definitely not. Stephen lives and breathes statistics. They work as a statistical consultant at several companies and give lectures at the university. Every time they get drunk, they start ranting about the misuse of p-values. Okay, well, that sounds really annoying, actually, so unfortunately, this statistician is going to die. Frankie Elves, 43, she is a tour manager. Frankie is a tour manager for an extreme metal band from the outskirts of Cosmopolis City. So far, they've organised three concert tours across the sea and around Walmart, all of which have been cancelled midway through, most likely to the capriciousness of the singer. Uh, that actually sounds like... This sounds like Gojira. Let's get this lady to open for the Olympics in France in 2024. This sounds like a great idea. They should have played Flying Whales, honestly. Sana Nxolo. She is a 62-year-old therapist. She has a weird patch on her eye right here. That might be a tear. Sana is a therapist for marital and intimate matters, mostly focused on helping those of an older age. They're always trying to promote an active and healthy lifestyle in all matters. Their favourite pastime is playing with their three dogs. Liv, that is a that is a green flag right there. That is a green flag. Let's check out the world right now. It's looking pretty good, to be quite honest. The tree is uh, burning down, so I think global warming is, is kind of getting the better of the place. But it seems like every other aspect is... Oh, I see how this works now! Right! So when we turn this lamp on, by the way, we get to see these hidden values. And it seems like when we also bring up this uh, crystal ball... So there's economy. There is uh, kind of like... Oh, I don't know what this would be. Um, warfare, I suppose. There's health, which is all these bodies burning. And then there's the actual... The actual global warming rating, which is this tree. So we've actually got a pretty good balance going at the moment for a, a nice week here. All right, Marianne St. John. She's a 26-year-old office assistant. Marianne works at FinTech Startup. The boss likes them because they always manage to organize fun team events on zero budget. At home, they dream of royalty on a white steed sweeping them off of their feet or binge-watching environmental docs on MeToo. They love knitting and listening to the band Post Fornication Pipes. The <laughs> Post Fornication Pipes. <laughs> okay, I love that. I love that she lives her life the way she wants to. You do you, lady. Okay, Francoise Fukushima. What a strange blend of names. Uh, is a scam artist. A liar and a grifter. Francoise is an ex-politician who spent many years writing books of ignorant nonsense. These words and actions caused a vertebral butterfly effect of misery on a global scale, which they now profit off of. Ah, oh, well, sucks to be this guy. Goodbye! No scams in my world. 
Okay, and we've got Yvette Fernanda, 36-year-old minister. Yvette has taken upon themselves a great set of responsibilities in a field they lack knowledge of. Those decisions matter. Yvette tends to fumble gloriously. Let they do try to better themselves according to criticisms from the public, even though they don't often understand most of that either. She is trying her best. Unfortunately, it's not good enough, so this minister is going to die. It's not based on her religious preferences. It's simply because she can't learn from her mistakes, and that is detrimental. Hey, uh, look, six people are living. Three deaths. That's a pretty good ratio today, right? I think we've really balanced the scales out. Nice. All right, we'll check down south. I think we already looked in Mortimer's Mate, booty hole. No, he didn't. It is an utmost pleasure to see you again. Thank you very much, Mortimer. What is this? Whoa, a seriously terror-inducing visage. But then again, who wouldn't want to look like an antediluvian anti monstrosity? Besides, tentacles are extremely useful and practical. Okay, maybe we can uh, riz the bartender with some tentacles if we get paid a, a huge amount today. Let's talk to fate. Hello there, buddy. Grim, welcome. You know... Pursuing my art has given me insights. That you're not very good at it? I have been thinking of humanity, of mortality, their importance, worth, and meaning. And... Are you just trying to convince yourself on the merits of your plan? Here we are, I literally... No, <laughs> it is sound. We are literally playing psychologist for fate. Listen, is death really such a bad thing? It would be better for everyone. In fact, do these humans even truly exist? Their ephemeral being leads to no relevant outcome. Is that how you say ephemeral? I've always said it as ephemeral since I learned that word when I was like 10. Ephemeral is kind of like um, something that is present, but at the same time also not there. It's a, it's a concept. Ephemerality is a concept. It is all transient, no matter what they do or achieve in life. Transient is kind of like, um, it diminishes the bigger picture. No, it's diminished by the bigger picture. Uh, sounds accurate thus far. They exist in a state of hubris and arrogance, considering them the center of the universe. Well, someone's never looked up astrology. Yet without them, the sun still sets and rises. Stars explode, galaxies form. I stand corrected. Or get torn apart. There are departments even for these events. Oh, send me to the star department. Humans are not the be-all, end-all pinnacle of creation. They are small and insignificant, yet full of themselves. The grandeur of everything will not get superseded by specks of nothing. I'm not sure that's fully accurate. It matters not how they live through their subjective experiences. Millions upon billions of them. Everyone considering themselves unique. Uh, that's also not true. And technically they are, I suppose. Well, that's also not true. Scale, yet also exceedingly similar. Copying each other. Living through similar events with similar basic reactions. Yeah, uh, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the uh, depression and stuff, right? Everybody wants to be unique, but to be unique... People go onto the internet and they look up videos about how to be an individual and all they end up doing is becoming exactly the structure of that video that they just saw, which inherently means that they are not individual, they are exactly the same. There's this video that keeps getting recommended to me on YouTube uh, called How to Sound Completely Unique with All of Your Screams and I watched it and I realised, huh, everybody that watches this video is going to learn exactly the same kind of screams. I, I mean screams like the music. And what I actually ended up learning was significantly more unique because I ignored all of that advice, uh, the like industry standard stuff that, that people are just kind of lazily thinking is the best because in 10 years, no one's gonna wanna hear that kind of stuff. While the universe is full of endless wonders they cannot and will not even experience or perceive ever. Uh, still listening. Their presence is not even necessary to validate these events outside their subjective experience or understanding. The events wouldn't happen without their presence. Do you know the saying, Grim? If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it... Uh... Death in Texas? What? No. Why would you even... It is... Does it make a sound? <laughs> The ultimate height of arrogance ingrained in them. To imagine their presence to be paramount. Allegedly, allegedly, paramount uh, copyright uh, claimed the videos. The tree does not only sound, 
it has been sounding a long time. It has grown without anyone present. It has lived a life. I mean, a tree falling in a forest doesn't make a sound. If you want to look at it scientifically, then yes, that falling is going to create a ripple in the air, which creates sound, right? But in terms of like, whether or not the idiot asking themselves the question has the bare essentials of object permanence, technically no. It, it wouldn't make a sound because you never saw the tree and thus it never existed in the first place. None of this requires humanity to be there to bear witness. Yeah, yeah, that's what I just said. But it is from the perspective of the person, the question that you're asking here. Uh, I don't really agree with what you said, although I agree with everything. Can I also get a daily review? Fine, let me gather the files. I certainly put them somewhere. <laughs> Oh, yes. You absolutely did everything correct today. Such meticulous profile work. Happy? Soft moan. Sometimes I do not comprehend <laughs> you at all. Oh! Well, that concludes our meeting. <laughs> Good night, Grim. <laughs> Soft moan! <laughs> Validate me, daddy fate! Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> this game has degenerated so so fast. Oh, I don't think I think we're a hundred buckery boos short for the tentacles as well. We're gonna become a deviant. Let's go down here. Oh, we just can't afford it. Okay, let's hope that we get the god roll on the tentacles another day, right? Because maybe we can um we can riz daddy fate. Oh, we got some dialogue in the mirror. Is your hand tired? Are your fingers getting stiff? No, why? You've been clicking around for quite a while. What do you mean clicking? I'm wearing meat. I, uh huh? No, my hands are fine. Ah, you have the fortitude to keep on with the grind until the very end. Thank you. Must be why fate chose you instead of all the other candidates. Lost souls. Uh, you talking to someone else? Oh, she's talking to me. Okay, I understand. Thanks for caring. This is super weird. No weirder than your death. At least that got you here. To the office, where you belong. Why is all of that capitalized? I love how th when she says you, it is capitalized. So I feel like she is talking to us, the player, and breaking the fourth wall a little bit. Let's put a, a nice hat on this guy. I'm thinking maybe a, a sombrero. How about this sombrero? I think that's a good idea. People always say, but what happens if you put it in the coal on? In the three and turn at 90 degrees? I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. Oh, has anybody seen like what happens if you search colon up on Twitter? And it, it just pops up like, um, it has lots and lots of hits on people saying, I love the smell of his colon. There's people misspelling cologne. I love that so much. Uh, we're actually wearing a sombrero. That's pretty funny. Uh, fate is busy. We'll go all the way down. Colon three. Uh, is the pub open? No, it is not. It's also empty, like completely empty, which is the first time I've seen that in a long time. We're going to work. Letter. Okay, so we've got five more days left. Four humans have to die. So four of these, one of these people has to live. Grim, how do I put this? There is a nigh vulnerable virus ravaging everyone on the planet. Meanwhile, you know what to do. Okay, I'll put that in the desk right here. Let's go ahead and look at the news. Don't let age get you down, says noted therapist in a new book about sexual health. Good advice. Chloe Miller braves the jagged lines of Rockworm Peak for Save Small Souls Children's Foundation. I like that too. Popular political commentator dies of a heart attack. I love that. Uh, bewildered minister stumbles off of a cliff into the ocean during photo shoot. Photo shoot? Wonder why. Tune in today. These live streams by a jolly elder are absolutely worth it. Great. Crypt of Decay finally blasts across Walmart and Carthania with a stunning series of concerts. Crowds are amazed. Culture Mag, Zombie Flex as popular as ever. Check out Blam Blam 6 2. <laughs> Blam Blam 6 2. It's the second Blam Blam 6. In cinemas today, newfound virus threatens to sweep every continent. Okay, I love how that's just like a footnote as well. Oh, this is too embarrassing for me to recover from by. Oh, that sucks. I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, is this Elon Musk? An unemployed lab rat. Ruben is currently in between jobs and is actively looking for employment. They are enamored by zombie horror films and go to the cinema almost compulsively. They earn most of their living currently by taking part in medical human trials. I feel like this guy is actually going to become a zombie. Let's just keep him over there for now. we got to kill five people, right? That's 
That's what I, I read out of this. Yeah, four humans have to die, so one person lives. Jim Waller is a charismatic opinion leader among their peers. They use this characteristic to affect campaigns for things they think are right. These topics include reducing the use of plastics, banning beige shorts, and stopping any vaccinations. Okay, that is detrimental to the planet. Especially since there's a virus ravaging the planet. I know there's gonna be a couple of anti-vaxxers watching this video in the future and they're gonna be like, oh no, you can't force somebody to go through vaccines. But uh, quite frankly, if there is a virus ravaging the planet, why would you not just do, like it's it's a thing, right? If you, if you sacrifice one thing for yourself so that the entire world can uh, have the same freedoms that you would want for yourself, just do it, just do it. Minor sacrifices lead to major uh, change. Okay. Anus May Ortega, 33, she is a dentist. Gross. Anus claims a dog ate their diploma and everyone just has to believe that they're an actual dentist. To look like they know what they're doing, an anus just drills random teeth on patients. Well, good for her. She's learning by doing. Eric O'Brien, 42, he's an optometrist and he doesn't wear glasses. That's pretty funny. Eric loves gazing deep into the eyes of people. They just can't get enough of what they see in there. Usually pupils, corneas, the retina and all the rest. Sometimes they imagine they can see into the very soul of the person. Sometimes they just see eye damage they need to work on. That one's okay. We'll put that in the, in the live pile as well. Uh, Yosefa Eleanor Margarita, 28-year-old nurse. All their life, Yosefa has made their personal mission about caring for those who cannot care for themselves. In addition to their hospital job, they also volunteer at various communal centres. They rent a small apartment in the suburbs with their brother and live a quiet, happy life. Okay, we know who's living. It's going to be her and everyone else. Unfortunately, everyone else has drawn the short straw and they... Well, no, I... Oh, piss! I wanted to kill this guy! I wanted to kill this creepy guy! Ah, well, we're not going to get paid today, which uh, just sucks, but, you know, it is what it is, I suppose. And unfortunately, the student also is going to die. Yep, I'm pretty happy with my choices. Unfo I'm just doubling down on them. I'm just going to double down on them. I don't really have much of a choice. Okay, let's go ahead and talk to Fate. Hey, what's up, my Dizzle? Ah, the beginning. It has the sweet taste of deliverance. Every blade of grass. Every ray of light. It is a captivating day, is it not, Grim? It's a confusing day. A magnificent moment for some death and destruction. I don't really care either way. You are a peculiar death. I will give you that. Such apathy. Uh, my high spirits leave me at a loss for words. Well, I'm not really pleased with all of this. What about my daily reviews? Who cares, Grim? They are a bore. I need to get paid somehow, you dick! I'm not really pleased with all this. Try harder, Grim. Perhaps you can dig yourself out of this grave. <laughs> Work awaits, Grim. Get to it. You gonna pay me? I trust you to make the correct choices. I, myself, must concentrate. The muses have struck me. They beckon. Work to be done while there is still time. Oh, that's kind of cool. All right, you do you then. You do you then, Fate. You do what you must. No! Oh, that one little typo that we made. I suppose that is the core mechanic of the game. Okay, uh, so we're not going to get anything from Mortimer's uh, booty hole. Let's go ahead and just end the day. And back to the office, I suppose, unless there's something else open. I'm going to look into Mortimer's booty How hole real quick. Have we met? I lost all count. Uh, well, I've actually got a, um, a calendar upstairs which would tell you. But unfortunately, it's not terribly reliable, apparently. What the hell is this guy doing on the second lowest floor? Highest, uh, highest floor. That's not where he belongs. Okay, instructions. Oh, thanks for the pen. That's not what I wanted to pick up. Uh, six humans have to die, so one of these people have to live. Let's go ahead and read the news since our phone won't shut up. Crazed viol volunteer turns violent in retirement home. There's nowhere safe anymore. Oh no. Was that the one we saved? Young people in latest antiviral medicine trial warned of severe risks as one dead from complications. Ah oh, well. anti bait shorts animus still simmering in the background even after death of front leader. The people of Cosmopolis City noted for having very beautiful eyes. That's creepy. Television preacher calls upon the end times as a deadly virus officially announces pandemic. This game's aged well, honestly. I don't know what is happening, but it's aged well. Oh no, everything is literally falling apart now. Ah well, I suppose that's exactly how the game is supposed to end anyway. All right, 
Uh, Peter Adamski is a nanny, a nanny for the somewhat well-off middle class, that's what Peter came to Cosmopolis City for. With an initial one-year contract, they saw it as a decent way with a decent wage to escape their reconstruction era home country. It's a nice adventure when you're young, at least. Okay, well that's fine, that's pretty neutral. Jackie Funk is a televangelist. I've, yep, I've seen enough. Uh, she's going on the die pile. Definitely on the die pile. Ludo Ellen Elenafe, 33, unemployed and homeless. A few years ago, Ludo fell into hard times. They tried their best to claw back into society, but failed. Recently, they have been going to job interviews again, as the market is looking for fresh recruits after a series of sudden outbreaks of disease. This guy, I'm going to stick him on the live pile, which I'm going to stick right here. Uh, the reason I skip the televangelists is because they are generally a detriment to all of society. There has not been a single televangelist that has worked in the betterment of humanity. They've all been very, very greedy. And there's even now a couple of televangelists who are flying around in private jets. Uh, people are calling them literally the Antichrist, who kind of wears the skin and speaks false, false things, right? They're, 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 the, they're the prophecy fulfilled and they don't understand why that people are looking at them like this and they, they fly place to place to scam people. All right, Dar Ashley is a teacher. Dar is a homeschooling veteran with their pupils mostly being from the elite of society. They feel very comfortable with teaching and will likely continue to do so until retirement. They've always wanted children of their own but never found the time or effort to go down that path. That's sweet. That's sweet. Okay, um, possible live, possible live. Vlad lives alone in their big mansion, brooding, rarely receiving vi visitors. The big advanced laboratory, rumoured to be in their basement, occasionally attracts travellers in search of knowledge. Ah, uh, That's weird. What about this guy here? Lenny Kuski, 41, movie director. A notorious filmmaker made famous by the Blam Blam 6 series. Oh, the second one just came out, actually. Lenny is enjoying their fame and fortune on a private resort outside Cosmopolis City. They feel like they are really touching people with their work and consider expanding the series into a franchise of its own. Okay, that's pretty neutral. Don't really care too much. And there's Gordon Onogwe, who is a pharmacist. Gordon got through medical college mostly by cheating. As such, they barely remember what they were taught. When people ask for consultations at the pharmacy, they usually say a lot of random but smart sounding words. They often sell the medicine randomly. Okay, well, get rid of him. Um, that is directly beneficial to society. I don't really. Let's see what's in the basement. I think if we kill this guy, then we'll figure out exactly what's in the basement. There's two deaths. Uh, this guy is too neutral. I'm actually going to kill him off. There we go. And Lenny Kuski, unfortunately, man, your uh, movies are about to get real famous. Die. That's four. We need two more deaths. Uh, televangelist, definitely gonna die. Sorry, I don't make the rules. And she ain't going to heaven, I can almost guarantee that as well. Uh, so we've got Dar Ashley here, who's a teacher, and then we've also got this unemployed and homeless Ludo McElinath. Right, so, a few years ago Ludo fell into hard times, they tried their best to claw, claw back into society but failed. Recently they've begun to job interviews again as the market is looking for fresh recruits after a series of sudden outbreaks of disease. I thought this guy was going to help with the disease, but maybe not. This guy is a homeschooler, so he's definitely practicing good hygiene. It just makes sense. It makes sense for that guy to live, right? Not. It doesn't make sense for the homeless guy to die for any reason, other than we have a quota. This guy... He seems to actually be a bit of a good person. You know, education is always a good thing. Okay, we've just ruined the world. I saw that in the snow globe. That's pretty funny. Uh, we'll come up here and then we'll talk to fate really quickly. Hey, Dingle Dangle, what's going on? Grim, I find myself at an impasse. Lend me your thoughts. I like birds. Uh, I, I like how they're waterproof and uh, they kind of sweat out of grease. That keeps them waterproof in the rain, which uh, it keeps them warm. I... That's that's what that's what I'm thinking about right right now, and that's why I like birds. Should my prose be more experimental, or should I stick to traditional narrative techniques? Oh, experimental for sure. We gotta sandbag him. Grand, yes. The exploratory aspect can lead me across the boundary. We're gonna turn this guy into the next Atticus, just literally shoveling out garbage and people just lap it up because they already have a predisposed bias before they read the poetry and they read into it. And there was nothing there, but they found something. And that's, that's you know, that's Atticus's platform, that, that poet, that guy, Atticus. You are still here, Grim? Yep. I guess you want to talk about work instead? Yes, I want that money! Oh, uh, fine. Let us take a look at the situation. My, so much chaos. Pain and suffering are 
off the charts. That's awesome. What is... Wow. Reanimated corpses running around consuming the flesh of other humans? They are unstoppable, brutal death machines. Astounding. All right, we've got a zombie apocalypse. Hey there, Linda Mashburn. Sorry I'm late. That's absolutely fine. The stream goes on. And it all stems from a singular patient zero, Caleb Sadi Rondeau. Sometimes it takes but a small nudge. Caleb. What's his name? Caleb Sadi Rondeau. Caleb Sadi Rondeau. Excellent. So, we are going to be keeping that name in mind because we do want a lot of the endings in this game. I want to see just how well we can save the world, I think. What can I say? Things do not seem to be going well at all. Yeah, I know. You're kind of like leading the world to to be demolished. A tremendous accomplishment, Grim. Uh, never before have I felt such shame. No shame in shame. We are not heartless, you and I. Well, if you're a psychopath, actually, then medically you are kind of heartless. Had you truly wanted to stop the great dying, you would have chosen to act differently. But money! The desire was hidden within you all along. Yes, yeah, so it's not as if I was doing things randomly. Ah, uh, what <laughs> is done is done. These are the consequences you must live with while you still live. Off to work, Grim. Certainly, you have no time to waste now. No, most certainly not. What game is this? This is Death and Taxes. It is a kind of like a moral standpoint where we get to play a Grim Reaper. Nice. We got to, we got paid 400 buckery booze. Uh, we get to play a Grim Reaper and we get to choose whether or not people just live or die. That is the entire premise of the game. It's pretty simplistic. Uh, it's got a really good narrative as well. Let's check out Mortimer's booty hole. Uh, there's not really anything we want here. Okie dokie. We're going all the way back up to have a snooze. No, we're not. We're going to go check out the mirror first and get some more exposition. Hey. Hey. What's up? What, pray tell, happened to the world? Zombie apocalypse. Uh, uh, the humans deserve... No. Um, I don't know. Sure well, do. I do. It's the culmination of all your choices. Do you know the story of the wyvern and the prince consort? No. What? No. Of course you do. A young, quick-witted prince consort was once kidnapped by a wyvern. Oh, of course. Using their gift of charm, they tried to alter the ways of the wyvern in order to save their lands. Soon, the beast and the prince found resonating ideas and ambitions. They molded the land in rather inept ways, whilst thwarting attempts of rescue by the queen. Then, the wyvern tired of the desolation, ate the prince, and flew away. I'm the prince. I'm the prince. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, you would have answered yes to any one of those. Yes. Okay. Okay. It doesn't matter if your mistakes were countless or few, as long as you learn the lesson. We are thankful of our time together, even as it's quickly running out. It'll be pretty horrible from here on out. Oh, how could it be any worse? Okay, how do you decide what to play every day? Uh, that is a really good question. I usually pull most of it out of my ass. That, <laughs> that's, that's how I decide most of the games I play. Sometimes I'll like stream an entire game that's been requested in one sitting, if I can do it in one sitting. We're gonna, ch we're gonna plunder Mortimer's booty hole, if Ever we can. I wonder if there's ah. a way to do things differently? No, why? No, I've never wondered that. Okie dokie. So we've seen enough of that. I don't want the cactus. So I want to save up for the uh, the hentai. The, the hentai tentacles, I think. All right. To work we go. Instructions. Two humans have to die. Out of three. Oh, that's fine. I can decide that. That's easy. Let's take a look at the news. Influenced it. Take a close look at this teacher mercilessly shutting down a violent tantrum. Nice. We did that. Famous preacher dies during marathon session. Heart attack as suspicious cause. Marathon session. I don't know if that's like she was training for a marathon or if she spent like days on end just smoking all of the drugs she possibly could. Or him. Televangelist legend leaves massive fortune to their devout followers as Death Wish on live TV. I feel bad about that now. Whoops. 
Modern classic filmmaker ac accidentally killed by housemaid in apparent sexual harassment attempt. Oh! Traffic accidents see sharp rises, average driver behaviour increasingly erratic. Brooding recluse mysteriously disappears. Entire Cosmopolis city in quarantine. Please do not leave your homes. We couldn't change that last one. Tomorrow, can you do Fortnite customs if you can? Oh, it'll be really hard to do so. I've got, I've got a schedule. I am adhering to a rough schedule for the next few weeks, and I don't really have enough room for uh, such a large game to not only be installed on my system, but also, unfortunately, um, be put on there. But I will be getting to, like, Fortnite eventually. I still want to check out the Fortnite Lego stuff. That looks really fun. It's just the whole Battle Royale thing. It, it really put me off of the game, especially because I was around in 2014 when I saw the ads for what Fortnite was supposed to be, which was like a player cooperative base building zombie survival game. It was never supposed to be competitive. It was uh, just supposed to be a zombie survival game. It looked really fun. I was really excited for it. And unfortunately, they went down the Battle ro uh, Royale route and um, just really let me and everyone I knew down. Right, this guy's Ryo Kobayashi, 35, is a politician. Ryo has been aggressively advocating for new radical policy, which completely eliminates all taxes. Any and all vocal opponents are mercilessly mocked. I mean, what did taxes ever do for us anyway? I don't know. Police? Fire department? Uh, septic systems? Electricity? Well, I suppose that's kind of private. But still, like, the, uh, here in New Zealand, there's a lot of uh, government, government initiatives that are electricity-based. Uh, this guy, unfortunately, is going to go straight in the ground. All right, Frederick Hurg. He's a monk. Frederick spends all of their days in the monastery writing manuscripts by hand. Although the printing press was invented centuries ago, they insist that texts written by hand are the most pure. Fair enough. What about this guy? Lieutenant General Ismo Gustav. Lieutenant General Ismo Gustav has served their country with respect and admiration. They're currently tasked with containing the massive viral epidemic recently dubbed the White Death. As Kamopolis City falls apart, they stay vigilant in upholding their duty, which, with whatever means necessary. I feel like the guy that raids artifacts was the guy that kind of like kicked off this zombie apocalypse one. I gotta go, sorry? That's okay, Linda Mashburn. You have a great day yourself. I'll be uh, plugging away at the stream here. That's a hard choice, actually. Do we allow this monk who it doesn't really harm anybody to continue living? Or do we allow the guy who could potentially fix the zombie apocalypse to live? All right, well, I mean, like, unfortunately, I'm just gonna go with that. We've done our duties, right? We've done our due diligence. Yeah, two humans have to die. Wonderful, we've done it. Nice! Excellent. I'm happy with that outcome, to be honest. Good, 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 good. So, pub's not open. Mortimer's booty. Where is Mortimer? Oh, no, he's down there. Okay. I just didn't see him on this uh, pile of booty. He wasn't sitting on his booty. All right, let's talk to Fate again. Hey, buddy. It was a quick day, wasn't it? Mm, hello, Grim. I have been absorbed in my work. Yes, I see. Tell me, how goes it out there in the wild? Zombie apocalypse, but I think I got on top of it. I assume the plan is coming into fruition? Uh, it's just properly spiralling out of control. Fate unconstrained, with nothing to stop it. Seems a terrible power, yes? Not really by the core definition of fate, but uh, you live in your head, Canon friendo. Wild bands of animated corpses roaming the streets, attempting to break through the barriers of the survivors' compounds. My, my. It truly looks like the end. I am giddy <laughs> with anticipation. That's all I ever wanted! Death to humanity! Maybe I can still find a way. All seems to be outside our timid grasp already. Uh, you never, it's never too late to try, though. Goodness, look at the time, Grim. Precious moments wasted. Enjoy your night. Ah, oh, thank you. What if the pub's open? Probably not. I bet the pub is not open. 400 bucks, nice! All right, we can go to sleep. The pub is closed. Let's check out Mortimer's booty hole. Uh, we just got paid. We got 1,500 buckery booze in our pocket, which is pretty damn good, actually. Let's go ahead and just go to bed. I think that's probably going to be the best option, right? And now fate is down in the offices, down in the trenches, per se. Uh, Mortimer, do you have anything in your Time booty hole? Now, Not really, no. Okay, so he doesn't have any tentacles, which is the only thing we really want to buy. Let's go ahead and look at the grim office. The rules. The few remaining humans have to die. What? There's only two. Why bother? Why bother read them if they're just going to die? KVR is a healer. KVR wishes to heal people so that they sort 
Knowledge from a mysterious recluse who reportedly has a magnificent laboratory and possesses great knowledge about healing people. Recently, Cave has been feeling increasingly dizzy for some reason. Ah well, rules are rules. Archibald Rowland, 73, the president. Archibald, the leader of the free world, went into the election race promising to funnel more money into healthcare and to tackle ethical problems within the pharmaceutical industry. Now they orbit over Cosmopolis City in their presidential aircraft accompanied by their twin brother, Gotted. Completely useless, cl- clueless about what happened and why. Let's let this guy live. Let's let him live. Maybe he'll find a way out. We don't exactly need any more money, but I think we're going to be in a pretty good spot. we got two days left. Is the pub open? Yes. Uh, this, this is Mortimer. Hey, buddy. What are you doing up here? You get a drink? Oh, mighty. At last we meet here. The finest tavern in all the lands. You know, I'm reminded of the time me and me crew were sailing around the Cape of Ill Omen. Oh, no, not more pirate tales. Uh, I'm listening with bated breath. And corresponding to the name, a mighty storm or a burrow right on the horizon. Really? Shook our ship to and fro. Many of me made swept into the icy depths of the unforgiving ocean. Uh, well, uh, uh, the, the ocean can't really be icy on account of it being liquid. Aye. The sea's a cruel mistress. No ways about it. Uh, just clock out and let it happen. <laughs> Booty. <laughs> <laughs> We're disassociating. Okay, let's blink and squint. The egg. Wait, did you just say egg? What are you on about? I said that's how I got my skeleton leg. Oh, that was most excellent. Matey, you have humbled me with the praise I only partially deserve. No, you deserve it all, Mortimer. You have heard of me many exploits. What a story. How about ye regale Mortimer with a tale of grand adventure instead? All right, fine. Yesterday... I left the house. I went for a I went for a quick walk. No, that wasn't yesterday. Last week I left the house. I went for a quick walk with uh Yin Zet, my girlfriend. We walked around a um a garden, a nice garden for a little bit, about 40 minutes, and then we went home. Fire away. Okay. So I was also sailing the many seas. And the su- the, sh- the sun was shining onto my face. Suddenly, I smelled a sharp spike of pain. Soon enough, uh, uh, I found myself face to face with a handsome stranger. Uh, they barked wildly at me. So I said, you're pretty hot. <laughs> and then we smooched. Uh-huh. I see. <laughs> Twas a... <laughs> Most remarkable tale, a marvelous memoir, a fabulous fable. <laughs> with a romantic undercurrent to boot, Mortimer loves those. Awesome, we made out with a dog. In return, I offer ye a gift. We spun a good tale for Mortimer, we got an achievement. This here contraption is called a phantasmalizer. What a heinous name. You what does it do? You measure the many spirits ye have imbued into your gullet. Handy after any visit to the tavern. What the hell does that mean? It was a great pleasure to have your attention. Time to head back to me Emporium. Comrades awaits. Okay, you, if you've got any tentacles, I'll buy them. He's not going anywhere. He's just going to keep sitting there. All right, what do you want, bartender lady? Hey, if it isn't my good pal Grimoire. Don't be silly. That's a book. Heck, has it already been a month? like you just got here a couple hours ago. Ah, astute observation. Or it is, you've caused a huge mess out there in the world. I must certainly have. Everything's like burning, drowning, dying all at once. Thought you had it locked down. It's not my fault. Fate's the one to blame. How so? Management is supposed to avert disaster. Uh, it was like whining our life sucks and he wants it to end. And you're the loyal drone going along with it? Yep, I do what I'm told. Always the disciple even to a cataclysmic end. It disappoints me, Lil Grim. I feel for your lack of rebellious spirit. Forever chained. I want to see what would happen! I wonder what's going to happen with the office now that you've got very little left to do. Can we wait until a new organism takes over the world? It's a plan, I can give you that. Maybe not the best, but something. Might be time to get that last drink, huh? 
I'd like a drink. Sure. What's your poison? I'll take some death and taxes. I still haven't got the balance of this one quite right. It may need a bit more tinkering. I drink it alone. It's an odd taste for sure. Delicate pastels mixed together with verbosity braced by an underlying secret code. Mysterious melodies linger in the background. There's an additional flavour of dramatic articulation which ties it together in a bizarre blend. Okay, I'm off. Little Reaper. Thank you. I, I don't know what I just experienced, but... I don't really care either way, to be honest. All right, let's check out Mortimer's booty hole. That's 500 bucks, Jesus. Okay, I've seen enough of Mortimer's booty hole to know that there's nothing down there for me. Do we go to work? We talked to fate. Let's talk to fate. Hey, buddy! It is growing quieter, Grim. Not much left now. What an utter catastrophe. An immaculate execution. The work of an artist. Sure. Ravenous corpses still roam around, searching for the final survivors. Once finished, they will also slowly perish. Not a trace remains. Ah, there could be some sort of a metaphor for gluttony in this. Hmm. Actually, I didn't... Now that I think about it, I have noticed a good theme of, like, the seven deadly sins recurring in the... Maybe that's what, that's what all of this is about. Anyway, and crucially, my book is nearing completion. So when do I get to read it? Soon enough. Patience, my friend. Leave me to my grand labor, Grim. Tomorrow we shall deal with the final matters of this office. Man, this guy's never heard of a side hustle. What an oath. What an actual oath. We got no money. Ah, oh, the world has ended. That sucks. I don't think the bar would have changed. Mortimer's booty hole probably doesn't have anything good in it either. Let's just end the day. So this should be the last day, right? Uh, fate's busy. What's down here? I'll go back to the bar if I can. Nope, I'm going to go see Mortimer's booty hole. Aye, the end is nigh. It's been quite a run, hasn't it? Yeah. We've decided a bunch of things about whether or not people deserve to live or die. I've learned a lot about myself and what I really don't care about ethically. Oh, we've got a breathalyzer, that's funny. Okay, we've come to it at last. Only one choice left to make. The last human must die. The end is nigh, fate. What does this do? Blow into this. Uh, which spirits possess my body this time? I don't even know what this thing does. Uh, the world is burnt, right? Oh, at least, at least no one's fighting. At least everybody's united under a common goal. That's nice. All right, Mullerad Gyorov, 55. He's the last human. The last surviving living entity stumbling across an endless wasteland drawing their final breath. Well, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna piss on fate. Let's get him to die. Bye-bye. Let's check the news. Netguard, all citizens subject to curfew, proceed immediately to your designated control area. The president, please remain calm. We have the best solution for everyone. Fake news. Feel the night creep inside our bones. Let us stop and wait until we freeze together. Okay. What a day! What what a day that one was! Deathbringer, doom everyone on a single day. Nice! We did our job! Yes, hello. The last day, Grim. The last choice. It'd be rude not so, to finish the plan on the last day. Naturally. No need to prolong the suffering of the last one. We are not cruel, after all. And that is that. No histrionics. Just a whimpering ebb into the void. Okay. Speechless. Understandable. I'm indifferent. I'm ready for that holiday now. With this, our acts of discourse can be concluded. Off you go, Grim. Do what you wish with these final hours. We will not be meeting again. All right. Oh, I got three achievements. Uh, knowingly fulfill fate's plan to end the world, finish the game with the highest chaos in health, finish the game with the lowest case chaos as well. Society's falling. Mankind succumbing to its innate flaws. That's not really what happened though, is it? Humanity wiped out. Well, that sucks. What a depressing end, as you, the instrument of destruction, wait to fade away.
That's not what we look like, though. Cool. Fellow traveler, that was fun, wasn't it? The choices, the excitement. Yeah, that was pretty good. he did largely screw everything up. The world is in shambles and all. Can't really change that. But I can offer a new cycle. A turn of the hourglass, and ye shall be set upon a path in a fresh timeline. A parallel world, so to speak. I like there it. you will again find every friend and enemy, hope and error. Knowledge and loot will remain, of course. Otherwise, tis the eternal recurrence of all things. Excellent. Do we have to, a new chance or the end? Let's go for a new chance. We're going to go for it eventually. Uh... I'm skipping Lemon. the intro. Spice and human eyes. These were the ingredients chosen to make the perfect little grim. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, I didn't see that last time. Finally. I okay, one. Oh, Faye. nice. There is actually dialogue. I hey, we meet again. We um, have not met before. Are you feeling well? Anyway. Welcome to your new job as an overseer of Cosmopolis City Subdivision 4, the Sun County Wine Region. I know what you are thinking. As it is your first day, try to get to know the system. Okay, I'd like to get to work right now. The commitment. One more thing. Yep, okay. One week. I'm looking so for additional dialogue. There wasn't any additional dialogue. Deeper. Next time we play this, we're going to blast through everything. Whoa! Look at all of our things! We are going to ignore fate for this next playthrough, honestly, but we are going to do that in the next episode that I record of this. So, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Right up here, you're going to find the playlist for Death and Taxes, and right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Down in the description of this video, you are going to find a link to my Discord where you can talk with me and my community personally. And until I make the next episode, will you catch the next live stream? Thank you so much for watching, and goodbye! Man, I guess the uh, moral of that story was just don't trust your boss, huh? Don't ever trust somebody who pays you. <laughs>